A couple yards deep. Bayou's going to bring it out. Liberty was great on kickoff coverage last week. Not this time. Getting loose on the move. He could take it the distance. That's Lexington Joseph to the house. What a way to start the 2020 campaign for the Panthers. There was an outstanding block at the point of attack to open up that hole where a Liberty defender, a Liberty kickoff coverage man was put on his backside. You can maybe be able to see it right there. And there goes the there goes the gap. Nice little stick on the inside, back to the outside, and now it's just a foot race. Well, you talk about coming on the road and punching your opponent in the mouth. That's the way you do it. Lex Joseph takes it the distance, and FIU strikes first. Extra point coming now. And that's up and through. Well, what a start for this FIU squad. The sophomore running back taking it a couple yards deep in the end zone. And they, I mean, there's only a thousand folks in the stadium right now, <laughs> but it quieted Ooh, them down. I can tell you that. Them down. Just get, trying to get settled in here. And one gets taken to the house. Joseph showed great breakaway speed, waiting to see him get caught from behind. But there was, there was no chance. He was, he saw that end zone and there was no stopping him. So they score and we still don't know who their quarterback is, right? <laughs> I mean, I got seven, seven, yeah, seven still points on the board. Yeah, still don't know. Seven points on the board, don't know who's playing quarterback. We talked about last week for Liberty. Their kickoff coverage was really a highlight of that yeah. ball game against Western Kentucky. They were fantastic in that aspect of the game, but they give up a big one, and now they're going to have to find an answer. And you can get stunned a little bit. Yeah, you know, no you come out, you think you're going to be able to ease your way into this ball game, feel it out a bit. Not the case. See, tomorrow in the film room at FIU, there's a young man who put a Liberty player on his backside. He's going to be walking around strutting his turkey feathers. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Because that was a great block. So the Flames now will get a chance to try to answer. Shedro Lewis back to return this one. What a start to this ball game. Nine seconds in. FIU on top. Lewis will let that one sail over his head. And the Flames take it at the 25. So we talk about the Liberty quarterback, Malik Willis, transferred from Auburn last year, had to sit out, but taking over this offense and really rejuvenating it is in the run game. Last yeah. season, Buckshot Calvert, he'd throw up 50 times a game. That was really what he did. Not really an athlete out of the pocket right. necessarily. Completely different look now with number seven. Yeah, the, the, the true RPO game in what Hugh Freeze wants to do is back now that the quarterback becomes that extra running option. Josh Mack in there alongside of Willis as the Flames start with the four wide receiver set. Willis hits DJ Stubbs. He's got some room to run. Shakes a man down the sideline and pushed out of bounds right around midfield. Well, listen, no shortage of excitement here as these two teams explosive early on, and it looks like there is a, a flag at the end of that play. We may have had a... Uh, I think he may have stepped out of bounds. He definitely stepped out of bounds, but we may have had a wide receiver holding downfield. Let's see what the call is. No. Unnecessary roughness going against FIU. I think they got him on that hit at the end. That's tough because yeah. he barely stepped out of bounds, and as a defender, you're still kind of right. wanting to make sure that play comes to an end. It's a tough break for FIU. Flames field position improves dramatically as they're now on the 36 of the Panthers. Willis pulls it out, spins away from the rush, can't get away from that, taken down in the backfield. That's Strickland that got to him. Devon Strickland out of Hollywood, Florida. Willis, we know about his athleticism, but couldn't spin away from that one. See, this is what FIU is going to do very well, and Butch Davis is going to coach well, is to keep him within the pocket, to understand what your rush lanes are, and to be able to keep Willis in the pocket where he can't use that athleticism outside of the pocket. And that was a real strength a week ago. When things kind of broke down against Western yes. Kentucky, Willis was able please to just please kind please of scoot outside and make something happen. And start, and start, start on my second So the Flames lose seven on first down.
Williams showing three wide receivers. Willis with the give, some room to run. Max slips down as he crosses the 40. So he gets back about five yards, and it'll bring up third and long. Yeah, you look at that play right there. Jay Mack really had a had a nice hole where the the right side of the line collapsed it down and lost his footing. Maybe he needs to be able to stick his foot in the ground, and get those shoulders north and south. Three wide receivers to the left, one near side. You look at what FIU is trying to do right here on third and long, playing man to man down on the boundary. Have one free safety up top, high. Willis trying to sit in that pocket, now has some room, moving, throwing across his body, and the catch is made for the first down. DJ Stubbs going up in traffic and hauling it in. Really nice play by DJ Stubbs, man on the boundary zone up top. DJ is able to find that, that soft spot in the zone and come down with a big third down reception. Flames going fast, throw to the end zone, and it is! Looking for the signal, caught, touchdown Noah Frith! Malik Willis laying it out there for Fred, and he couldn't have put it in a better spot. This will come up and see that man-to-man -man on the wide side of the field, get up there and play a little pitch and catch to the outside, and Malik Willis delivers a beautiful pass right over the outside shoulder. Was he in, Matt? I see got, this one, they, I got a feeling this one's look gone. Uh-oh. They are going to review it. You talk about you want to make Willis stay in the pocket and throw. They did that. But in rhythm, feet oh. square underneath him, yeah. you couldn't have put it in a better spot for where only his receiver, Noah Frith, could get it. And Frith, a guy, by the way, who missed last week's right. game against Western Kentucky, he was out injured. This week, he comes back, and C.J. Yarbrough goes out injured. He's a big target. Let's see if he got that foot down. Sure looks like, unless he's bobbling, we can't see it from that angle. Yeah, I think that's a touchdown. And I'm gonna tell you something right now, folks. If Matt Warner says that's a touchdown, then that's a... Yeah, that, that's a oh, touchdown. Yeah, I think that's oh, a touchdown. Oh, no yeah. Doubt. No doubt. I mean, Warner, we didn't even need... There it is. We didn't even need Eagle Eye Joe for that one. Save, right? Yeah, save, yeah, those, we'll for save those for later. Yeah. So Frith, redshirt sophomore, had a really great season last year. His first catch of the 2020 campaign, and it goes for six. Alex Barbier in now for the extra point. And is up and through. Well, you think there's going to be some action in this ball game? <laughs> Fireworks. 40 to go in the first quarter. We're all knotted at seven. We've got a shootout in Lynchburg.
A Sunshine State rivalry is tonight's Saturday night football matchup. Derek King and the number 12 Hurricanes host Florida State at Hard Rock Stadium. Canes have won the last three against the Knolls after losing seven straight dating back to 2010, 730 Eastern, 430 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One. Well, points of plenty so far here in Lynchburg. Liberty and FIU nodded at seven apiece as the Flames kick it away. Here we go. Here we go again. Joseph took one to distance to start this ball game. Has some room to run near side. Another good return across the 30 and taken down by the Flames kicker Barbier as he crossed the 35. You're watching the All-State Saturday kickoff and we're going to watch and see which quarterback is taking the field for the Panthers and it's going to be the grad transfer Max Bortenslager. Transfer from Maryland. Flames getting a chance back-to-back -back weeks to yeah. face former Terp quarterbacks. They are. Last week, they knocked off Tyrell Pigram in Western Kentucky. So, Borton Slogger getting a crack at it. Hasn't played since 2017 when he started eight games for the Terrapins. He's in there right now, looking to throw on first down. Trying to avoid the pressure. Here comes Rusens, and he's forced to just throw it away. So, Borton Slogger. Injured a lot of the last couple of years, and that really hurt his chances of playing. But he's replacing FIU's James Morgan, who was yeah. fantastic the last couple of years. Fourth round draft pick of the New York Jets. We expect to see not only Bortslager, but may well see Kalen Wiggins as well, the dual yes. threat quarterback later in this ballgame. Handoff. Some room to run for Devontae Price, as he'll get about five on second down. Really like Liberty defensively on that first play. They were able to really squeeze the zone well, and then the uh, the Latvia, Latvia mountain of mayhem, Ralph Rusens <laughs> came off the edge there to be able to, to make the quarterback, make Mad Max throw that thing out of bounds. The Latvian legend, yes. Ralph. The third, mountain of mayhem. Third and four now for FIU. Horton Slager has some time. Now he's running out, hit, dropped. Darrell Johnson, the Juco transfer who really played well a week ago, got to him and got him to the turf. Once again, really nice play by Liberty's secondary. Uh, Panthers trying to run a shallow cross on third and four, be able to hit that, and they did a good job covering, also covering the deep vertical. So those, uh, those two pass plays really on Liberty's secondary doing a great job. Well, it's going to be interesting with this FIU offense, a lot of new faces, maybe guys that have been in the program for a little bit but are pushed into a bigger role this season or transfers, which we'll get to in a moment as well. As they're unable to convert on third down, they'll punt it away. Fair catch called for in traffic. Flag thrown in. As folks getting a little too close to the Liberty returner, Demario Douglas. Kick catch interference by the kicking team number 45. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, timeout. Two 15-yard penalties already on FIU early in this ball game. Timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. 7-7 seven, seven score here in Lynchburg.
The All-State Saturday kickoff presented by All-State. Get a quote today. You know, Joe, they say Virginia's for lovers. That's what they say. They remind you of that all over the state with those giant love signs. <laughs> nice shot in downtown Lynchburg. A whole lot of love here in Lynchburg. <laughs> Not a whole lot of fans. A thousand fans were allowed into the stadium today. Here's a look at a handful of them. But the ones that are here and the ones that I'm sure are watching at home, just thankful the college football is back. A man with an amen and another amen. So the Flames score on their first possession. They get the ball back here. Malik Willis, three of three for 62 yards and a touchdown on that first Liberty drive. Bunch formation. Peyton Pickett in the ball game. They toss it to him, running right, has some room, lowers the shoulder and goes across midfield. Such a nice play there on the toss sweep, get in the bunch formation, pull the inside guy around, kick out, block down, and have a nice little hold, pick up eight yards on first down, exactly how you draw it up on the board. The Flames rushed for 354 yards last week, the most in a game since 2012. And they have really a three-headed backfield with those running backs that they'll rotate through here throughout the afternoon. And this is the formation with the offset tight end that they had a lot of success last week against Western Carol uh, against Western Kentucky. Willis going to keep it breaks outside trying to make one more cut makes a man miss finally hit and dropped at the 41. This kid in space can do some special things. That's deadly especially when you have a solid run game when you can have run that inside zone you're able to run the inside zone make those linebackers commit now you can get them on the edge and he gave it a he gave it a little Chris Berman whoop right there. You see that one? <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw, slipped yeah. him. Yeah. Willis, a Liberty quarterback record. 168 yards rushing last week. So first down for Liberty. He's going to pull it out. Tries to sling it downfield. Off his back foot and it's picked. Threw that one off of his back foot and it's intercepted. That's Richard Dames stepping in front. Although we have a flag down. Boy, this would be a heartbreaker Ooh. for FIU if it's taken away. Pass interference. Defense. Wow. Number seven. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. And it's an automatic first Boy, down. Boy, Josh Turner. I like to see this. Owes an apology on that one. Is that that was it? Not a great idea to throw that pass in the first oh. place. Yeah, and really it had no impact on the play whatsoever because the ball was so far under throw. Yeah, they had the perfect defense on right there. Two man coverage with the safety playing over the top to be able to get off the hash and make that interception. Was... So big break for Liberty. Four wide receivers now. Pickett remains in the backfield. They get to DJ Stubbs. One man trying to make trying to make him miss, not able to do it. A little extracurricular at the end of that as these two mixing it up. That was Dorian Hall on the tackle. That was a really nice tackle by Dorian Hall. What Liberty's trying to do, they man to man coverage, get a motion man. DJ Stubb comes in motion, crack down on the inside guy, throw him the bubble screen, and get him in space. But Dorian did a great job tackling on that play. So a two yard pickup for the Flames. Willis changing the play there at the line. Hands to Pickett. Has some room. And he's going to be close to a Flames first down. And he does have it. Peyton Pickett last year really got pushed down the depth chart. Didn't do a whole lot. But in 2018, he had nine touchdowns. So this is a kid that can play a little bit. He's getting the opportunity this season. Willis. Fires out to Demario Douglas. Near sideline, gets down to the 11. The stack formation with a shout out to Demario Douglas. It's just a quick pitch and catch and one-on-one. And, -on -one. and be able to win those first down battles and pick up five, six yards really opens up the playbook for Hugh Freeze. Flames like to play in a little tempo offense, so they're not wasting any time. Keeping it as Willis, patient running. He falls forward down to about the seven. 
Talked a lot about Malik Willis today with more on the Flames quarterback. Let's check in once again with Emily Austin. Emily? Yeah, guys, one of the most important things for a quarterback is to earn the respect of his teammates. I was talking with offensive line coach Sam Gregg on whether Malik has earned the respect of his teammates. And he said, my guys would pick up Malik and walk through fire with him. His toughness and ability to take a hard hit and pop up right away doesn't go unnoticed by our linemen. That's the same way we feel about our guy Joe Yock right here. Pick <laughs> him up, walk through fire. Third and one for the Flames. Hand off to Pickett. He will get that first down. So the Flames laugh first and goal from the five. And I'm really impressed with how Liberty is running the football right now. The offensive line is doing a good job, run a little G play where they can wash down, pull the guard, get them up into the hole, get on those backers. They're doing a very good job of controlling the front four of the Panthers right now. Liberty last season in the red zone scored a touchdown 70% of the time. Last week, Three of their six red zone opportunities resulted in touchdowns. This drop by Willis picks it up, trying to make something happen. And says he's hitting the backfield and quickly snowed under. That was Richard Dames getting there. Yeah, I just think he flat out, flat out dropped the ball. At that point, there's a party just says throw the ball through the back of the end zone and not take the loss. But uh, that's a big break to push them back for, for FIU's defense. So now second and goal from about the 12-yard line. See, here's the thing, Matt, is you always have the option. They're going to be a man-to-man -man team to the wide side of the field, so Willis always has that same option to throw that deep fade. Douglas goes in motion. Willis pulls it out, looking, throwing, and a flat comes in. And we're going to get another pass interference call, and it's going to go against Josh Turner again. Defensive pass interference, number seven. That's an automatic first down. So twice now on this drive, Turner has gotten flagged for pass interference as the Flames tried to fit that one into Kevin Shaw. Well, that was pretty close. Snap. So the Flames, big benefactors of those two penalties. They're knocking on the door. Big Michael Bollinger in at the game at fullback for the Flames. I'm feeling they're going to run right at him. Give it to Pickett, lowers the shoulder, hit, dropped. Good job by this FIU defensive line to stand tall. Kevin Oliver, the first one there. This is a big, big stop for either way. Big stop for the Panthers or a great opportunity for Liberty to score inside the red zone. This is. This is where you, uh, if you're on the offensive line, you earn your scholarship check. The pitch this time. Pickett trying to get the corner, cuts it up, and he's in. Peyton Pickett finds pay dirt. The Flames go on top. Talked about Peyton before. He kind of has a nose for the yeah. end zone. The nine touchdowns two seasons ago. But I just, I just love the call because everything's jammed up inside. They tried the inside run first. You down the two yard line. You got to protect the inside, and then they run a little toss sweep with Peyton, and he has a nose for the goal line. Barbier boots it through, and the Flames go in front, 14 to seven. A couple of costly penalties on that drive. The Flames take advantage as Peyton Pickett gets it into the end zone.
Well, Joe, you mentioned you weren't sure about that second pass interference call. I'm not sure if Bush Davis was either. He yeah. was having a long conversation with the officials there during that timeout. Yeah, especially when you get down in the red zone. It, I think you have to have a really clear call on a pass interference like that. It was it was close, and they're just such big calls when you, like I said, when you start getting deep in, near that red zone. Flames to kick it away. Lexington Joseph back again. If you weren't with us, he took the opening kickoff to the house to start this ball game. He's going to try to do the same here. A couple yards deep. Nothing doing this time as he is hit and dropped at about the 18. Much better job right there of the Liberty kickoff coverage team staying in their lanes and then squeezing the ball carrier down. So Borton Slager is going to stay in there at quarterback, and that is something to keep an eye on. Again, you hear rumblings that there's going to be multiple quarterbacks out there today for FIU. Kalen Wiggins, the most likely suspect to come in at some point, but Gordon Slager getting the second straight series, and it's hard, you know. Yeah, got to give him some gotta time. You got to give him some time to develop a rhythm. You don't want to yank a guy after a one, three, and out. Easy throw and catch. That completion to J.J. Holloman, and this is a kid as he's still fighting and finally held up. This is a kid to keep an eye on. Four-star player out of high school. Played 2017 and 18 at Georgia. He had five touchdowns for the Bulldogs in 2018. Really looked like he was going to be a star, but then dismissed from the program and ended up finding his way here to FIU. Handoff going to Devontae Price as he picks up a few on first down. I'd say get him the ball. Holloman? Yeah, yeah, yeah you may want to get him the ball a few times. He's a dynamic player. He looks like he could be a star. And a guy who last year helped on the scout team, Bush Davis said, you know, the reason we sent a couple of defensive backs to NFL rosters was because they were having to work with that yeah, guy we'll day in and day quick. out, trying to stop him. Second and five now for the Panthers. And off once again, up the middle, first down yardage as Price lowers the shoulder. Price with a solid north and south, churning your legs, picking up a, the thighs and, and seven, eight yards. That's just a really hard-nosed football run. Love it. Well, not only is FIU replacing their quarterback from last year, they're also replacing Anthony Jones, Napoleon Maxwell, their leading rushers. So Price forced into a bigger role, and so far today he's looked pretty good. Look out, Scruggs misses Bortenslager. He hangs in the pocket, now just throws it out of bounds. Javon Scruggs had a clear yes. path to the quarterback, and he came up empty. That was a really, really nice job by Bortenslager to be able to step in the pocket. The official saying that he had moved outside of the pocket. What? I don't, I don't know about that. Second and ten. The handoff. Ralph's Rusens may have got him in the, on the face mask there as the flag comes in. Rusens on the tackle and may have gotten a piece of that face mask. Flag on the play. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 99. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. First penalty of the day on the Flames. Penalties. Take a look here. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good call. Penalties were an issue for Liberty last week. Trying to clean that up here today. Interesting to see how FIU starts to work their game plan. They've had some success on the inside runs. If they keep going with that, that can help bring that extra man down the box, which then can open up the passing game. And off. Up the middle, Scruggs gets in there on the tackle, and Rice will pick up about three. Javon Scruggs is a really good tackler. They call him what, Matt? The general. The general. The general. They general. call him the general, and he likes he likes physical contact football. Safety's coach Corey Batoon also calls him the alpha wolf of this defense. Is a defense stopping Price a couple yards shy of the first down marker. You're starting to see a little bit of FIU feeling as if, like I said earlier, they can hit that inside run, yeah. get themselves into a third and two. That is a big offensive line out there. Look at the size of those men. Those are those are some large human beings that are moving people. Third down and two now. Wharton Slager in the shotgun. 
And off running left, cutting back with room to run. Look out, Price gets free, and he takes it the distance. 30-yard touchdown scamper for Devontae Price. Really, really nice job by the offensive line, sliding everything to the left. Price sticks his foot in the ground, cuts back, and is able to take it to the house. Really well executed play by the Panthers. Price did not have a touchdown all of last season. Picks up his first of 2020 there, and it with the point after pending, could tie this ball game up. And it does. Ourselves a good ball game here, man. 14 all, 216 to go. And what? Watch this cutback yeah, right once there. again. Haskins came down from his safety spot, but that cutback left him in the wake of Price. It started on the offensive line. The offensive line was able to get their zone blocking where they moved together. What, what do I like to call that? That's a that's a ballet of beef right there. Yeah. The ballet of beef you, was you moving like together using that and phrase, then yeah. opening up, get that front moving with them, and then Price hits the foot, sticks the foot in the ground, hits the cutback. You gotta love it. It's, it's, it's just beautiful to watch. These two offenses have had some success here early on. I guess I should throw on the special teams unit for FIU as well. As you come on the road, and the road was not a friendly place for the Panthers last year. They were 0-6 away from home. They allowed 39 points per game away from home. So they're trying to prove something here in week one for them that, listen, if we, we, that's, that was last year. Yeah. That was in the past. We yeah. can go on the road. We can have success. And so far, so good, 14-all. I mean, did you see that all the linemen were sitting down on the bench right there? The one guy had to, had a cut on his hand, was bleeding. That's old school. I mean, these guys are like, dirt. Well, yeah, these not, guys are turf. I mean, look at that. You can't rub look dirt these on guys. it anymore. These guys, these guys are, you know, they always call them, they always call them the big uglies. Yeah. Right? I don't think they're yeah. the big. I think they're the big and beautiful. They're big and beautiful, and those guys are moving bodies. What a good offensive line so far. It's all in the eye of the beholder, Joe. <laughs> this one taken by Shedro Lewis at the two. Take it out to about the 24. There's some hitting going on down yes, there. Sir. Yes, sir. So Malik Willis and this Liberty offense will take the field once again. Willis has yet to throw an incompletion. Five for five, 70 yards and a touchdown. But they have done a pretty good job, that FIU defensive, not letting him get loose Correct. in the run yeah, game. Yeah, he just got, he got loose the one time, was able to make it nice. But overall, they've contained him pretty well. The penalties, the penalties right now is what's really killing him. You know, the, the two pass interference calls yeah. and a personal foul call. I mean, th those were those are big penalties. Josh Mack back in it, running back for Liberty. Two wide receivers set. They give it to Mack. Whoa, spins out of trouble. Somehow keeps his feet. And he ran a long way to get two yards. Panthers did a great job building a flat wall right there, but Mack just uses athleticism to make something something out of nothing and pick up three yards. Mack's not a small guy, but he has great feet. Yes, he does. He does. And he was able to keep his balance right there, showed that. This is, Liberty has stayed in this offset tight end formation a lot with three wide receivers, one back. Likes to use motion out of it. Willis looking to throw, slings it out. That's caught by Johnny Huntley, the tight end. He's pushed out at around the 29. Huntley was a wide receiver at Colorado before transferring to Liberty and really came on late in the year last year at that tight end position. Brings up third and five now for the Flames. Big third down stop for the Panthers right here. Trying to score that touchdown, get off the field. Liberty two for two on third down conversion so far today. Got straight man across the board, high free safety. Willis under pressure, rolling out, slinging it, has a man and the catch is made by Demario Douglas. That athleticism plays yeah. when you're running the football. It also plays when you're just trying to avoid the rush and buy yourself some extra time. Now Liberty moving quick. They sling it out far side. Catch is made by Douglas again as he dives forward for three. Yeah, that's a big third down conversion. Demario Douglas ran an outstanding man-to-man -man route where he really stretched it upfield, stuck his foot in the ground, created separation, 
And then, of course, Malik Willis throws a nice ball to make the conversion. And then go fast right after that. Get that next play when you have the defense on their heels and you're able to go fast and pick up three yards. And later in the game, as defenses get tired, you'll break one of those. Hugh Freeze saying they wanted to get Douglas more involved this week. Three catches so far today. Willis rolling out. Throw caught by Barrett, the tight end. He'll get three yards before he's hit and dropped. Rocky Jacques-Louis oh. on the tackle. Oh, your right. accent is beautiful. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's summer in Paris. <laughs> Into the first quarter. Good one going here. Knotted at 14 all. Kick off your week three NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern with the Countdown Crew on ESPN and the ESPN app. Ahead of Monday night's highly anticipated Chiefs-Ravens matchup, go all access with Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson, plus an exclusive interview with Seahawks QB Russell Wilson and Randy Moss ranks today's best college football catches. They'll also have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, and preview each game right up until kickoff. And who hosts that show? Everyone, Samantha Ponder, Liberty University yes. alum. Joe Yacht. Nice. There you go. Malik Willis hasn't thrown an incompletion yet today. Still hasn't. That one caught by Noah Frith, who's fighting and scrapping for every yard, and it looked like he was able to pick up the first down. And he does. Yeah, that was just a good old-fashioned man-to-man -man fist fight right there. They battled each other. Then what I really like about Malik Willis, he puts the ball on the back shoulder, gives Frith the, the opportunity to be the only one who can make that play. Willis had a couple of really nice back shoulder throws a week ago.
trips to the left offset tight end once again love that formation shotgun. Willis pulls it out throws down too tall for his intended target and nearly intercepted Richard Dames had one taken off the board early nearly had another one that was one that Hugh Freeze had drawn up and said this is going to be a touchdown but what happened was Willis got too much pressure too quick to his face and it would not allow the receiver to get downfield far enough where he could put some air under the ball and give it to him they had it. But FIU did a good job of getting the pressure on Willis and making him rush the throw. You're watching the All State Saturday kickoff. 14 all here in Lynchburg, Virginia. Second down now for the Flames. They fake the pitch. Now rolling out. Willis sets his feet, fires through the hands of his intended target. That was Javian Lofton. Just a touch high yeah. the Juco transfer. Yeah, I'll put that one on Willis right there. He put a lot of steam on that throw. And he really didn't know he needed to feather that one in. He had Javian Lofton open, just put it in between the numbers and put a little touch on the football. He'd like to have that one back. Well, if you're Liberty, though, you have to be pleased with the looks you're getting. Yes. He is, the, what they're drawing up, what you freeze yes. has this offense working on right now. Like they're getting some good looks yeah. down the field. Yeah, and every every good offensive coach loves a team that plays man to man because it opens up the playbook. Once again, man free. Third and ten. Flames trying to draw him off sides. Nothing doing. Play clock down to three. Willis firing to the near side off the hands of Demario Douglas, and the Flames will be forced to punt. Liberty has really been trying to hit some of those outside throws would like to see him on a on a third and ten with man coverage to be able to have a receiver stick his foot in the ground work that slant back to the inside FIU brought both of their inside backers which vacated the middle of the field and had, they could have had an opportunity to make a throw directly down the line Aiden Alvis in to punt it away it's like Bryce Singleton back to return this wobbly one bounces at the 20. And it'll check up right there. So that'll get us to a timeout. This FIU defense finally slowing down Malik Willis. We'll have a chance to go in front when we come back.
14 all early in the second quarter. FIU offense taking the field, and they're doing so with the new quarterback. It's going to be Kalen yep. Wiggins, the redshirt junior, making his first appearance of the day in relief of Max Bortenslager. Wiggins played in 10 games last year, started one against New Hampshire. And James Morgan was hurt, and he ran for 187 yards in that ball game. So he is a threat, dual threat guy. And off, Malik Williams coming near side. They're able to pick up a chunk of yardage on first down. Williams and Devontae Price, who scored the touchdown a moment ago, they were high school teammates. And actually, in high school, it was Williams that was the starter, and Price was his backup. Now they kind of flip-flop rolls here at FIU. A tough backfield to stop in high school. Williams started his career at Arkansas. He's found his way here to this FIU squad. Second and two. Wiggins going to keep it and roll out. Has some pressure, sets his feet, fires deep. Underthrown. Well, I said underthrown. The receiver certainly thought it was. He was adjusting on the football, and then it sailed about four yards over his head. That was Bryce Singleton he was trying to connect with. Yeah, trying to throw that deep post route out of out of play action and, and boot around. Liberty did a good job of covering it. There really wasn't anything there. Uh, puts it into a third and two as well as FIU has run the football. You expect them to, to really hunker down here, run the ball up the middle, and pick up the two yards. That was like a center fielder misjudging a fly yeah, ball yeah. there. It's like, oh, a oh, little too long. Third and two. Again, Wiggins a threat to keep it and run. Hand it off, hit, wrapped up, and he's going to be dropped. It appears shy of the first down marker. Yeah, it looks like it'll be fourth down. Scruggs and Dupree both in on the tackle, and it will be fourth and about half a yard. Exact, exact same play as the touchdown run that Price had. This time, as he cuts it back, Liberty's able to not over pursue and stop him in the hole. Going for They're it. They're going for it. On their own 29 and a half. Woo! Wiggins and Williams in the backfield. Hand off, and he's got it. Still keeping those legs churning as he gets up to around the 35 36. That was actually Sean Peterson who just checked in. That was a kid who was had an offer from Mississippi State as a linebacker. Said he wanted to play offense. Comes over to FIU and. Nice. You like those old former linebackers yeah. in short yardage yeah, situations, exactly. don't you? They, they, they never even hesitated about going forward and fourth down, and, and you can see why. So the Panthers move the chains. Reagans with the handoff, hit in the backfield and dropped. That was Lex Joseph, it was, on the carry. And he lost about half a yard. Yeah, you're really seeing Javon Scruggs get involved in the run game. They have dropped him down into the box, and he is he is wreaking havoc in the backfield and bringing him on blitzes to get to the quarterback. Uh, yeah, he, he is he's doing a really really nice job so far in this game. The Flames coaches talk about just how smart he is on the field. This yes. is a state champion high school quarterback three times, and he can quickly diagnose what an offense is trying to do. And we've seen that here today. Handoff. Price has it. He had one tackle initially before he's taken down by Elijah James. So he picks up seven on the carry. We'll bring up third and short. Can't speak enough of, once again, how the Panthers' offensive line has come together. They're creating spacing. You can see sometimes they'll widen their splits a little bit to create more space with the defenders and, and get those cracks in the, to be able to create the, the lanes for the running back to be able to get up into. Doing a really nice job. Wiggins fires, caught, Catch. good coverage, but somehow able to hang on to that football was the receiver Bryce Singleton. Singleton was a big part of this offense in 2018. He had 368 yards receiving, a couple of scores, but missed last year with an ankle injury. So they are thrilled to get him back on the field. That's a really nice, on a third down conversion, to run the slant and to make the throw and make the catch right there. That was very well done, because like you said, the coverage was excellent.
Kalen Wiggins methodically moving the chains and moving FIU down the field. They give it to Price. Picks up four or five. And that run game yep. has been very effective for them. Price already up over 70 yards on the ground here today. If Liberty doesn't win defensively on the first down runs, it could be a long day with a lot of rushing yards for the Panthers. Wiggins going to keep it this time. He's got a crease just tripped up. That was Scruggs that stuck an arm in there. So Wiggins might still be running. And that's what an effective run game with your running backs does. If you're able to run the ball up the middle with your backs, now you get those defenders to overcommit, pull the ball out, find that running lane with an athletic quarterback, and now you're picking up the chunk yardage. 10, 15, 20 yards at a time. FI, FIU's got a little momentum going right now. Well, to be honest, this Liberty defense didn't have to spend a whole lot of time on the field last week against Western Kentucky. There weren't a lot of drives like this. Lex Joseph takes the handoff. He's met by a wall of flames who pushed him back. Flag is down on the play. Illegal formation. Five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. First down. FIU also has a player down on the field. That's big linemen. Mershawn Miller, Redshirt Jr. out of Miami. Right guard. It is a hot, humid day, especially down on that field. Now a good time to take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by PlayStation 5. This is the AP Top 10. Oklahoma. They were putting it on K-State a little bit earlier today. I'll tell you what, there's some football teams in that top 10. Alabama plays Mizzou tonight as the SEC kicks things off today. Kind of feels, I know everybody's not yeah. back just yet, but with the SEC playing today, kind of feels like we're so close yeah. to norm, a normal <laughs> college football Saturday, you know? Yeah, get those SEC games cranked up. That's a lot of fun. So the penalty backs him up, first and 15 now. Wiggins rolling out, being chased. Flag comes in. We might have a hold there as Trey Shop Clark was pursuing Wiggins. Wiggins. Looks like he may have had his jersey tugged on a bit. This may back the Panthers up even further. Holding. Offense number 88. 10-yard penalty. First down. That's a tight end, Sterling Palmer. So two penalties now. Have the Panthers move in the wrong direction. And, and these are the things that can just kill a drive. Yeah, they had such momentum going. They're running the football, pulling the ball off the quarterback, running the football. And then now all of a sudden you get the legal proceed or the not enough men on the line penalty. Now you get this penalty, and, and momentum can stop really quickly. So first and 25 now for the Panthers. Four wide receivers set. Wiggins going to keep it, picking his way through the defense. And we get four or five. Trey Sean Clark in on the tackle. We've got this two-headed monster at quarterback. And there's, what's the old saying? If you have two quarterbacks, you don't have any. <laughs> I think right now, just at this stage of the season, Bush Davis is trying to figure out who is the one. I doubt yeah. Yeah, he doesn't want to play multiple quarterbacks all season long. But early on, he's trying to figure out who how does the offense respond to each guy? What do they bring to the table? Wiggins getting his opportunity now. Sits in the pocket, fires, catch made, big hit, ball loose on the turf. And they're going to wave it off, say incomplete. Nice hit. Well, that was a manual Dabney coming up on J.J. Holloman with a big hello. Yeah, J.J. Holloman does a really nice job running a, running a curl route right here. But as you can see, does he have it? Oh, beautiful oh, punch. Punched it out. Yeah, beautiful punch. That's textbook, how you do it in practice 100 times a day. And that'll bring up third and long now. Panthers in that four wide set with the one back. 
We can look for them for screens, draws, yeah. and, and vertical pushes by the receivers. Flag down on the play. Wiggins rolling out, still looking downfield. Now just flicks it out of bounds, and we'll see what the flag's all about. Flag coming in on the far side of the field. Already we've had five penalties on FIU. Illegal formation. Five players in the backfield. Wow, second time on that this drive. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Butch Davis is not going to be happy about having two of the same penalty. Those are those are just not hustle hustle penalties. Those are mental errors that they need to get corrected, obviously. So the Flames decline it. And Tommy Heatherly will come on the field to punt it away. See if he can't pin the Flames deep. Mario Douglas, his feet back on the eight yard line. End over and punt. He's going to let it take a bounce. It does at the 10. Oh, boy. Oh, you could oh, not man. have done that any oh, better. Man. That's your pitching wedge right there from 120 yards. Tommy Heatherly, what a job. Backs the Flames up in the shadow of their own end zone, and that's where they'll start with it when we come back. Welcome back to a tied ball game in Lynchburg. A small world is even smaller in college football, and that's the case here today with these two head coaches. Freeze coach Davis's son Drew at Ole Miss for three years. At the time, Coach Davis wasn't coaching football, so he was around the Rebels quite a bit, and Freeze was joking earlier this week, maybe I'd let him hang around the program just a little bit too much. I'm really hoping that he didn't pick up on too much. Drew is now an assistant coach under his father for tight ends here at FIU, guys. Yeah, thanks, Dylan. You know, coaches aren't paranoid at all, Joe. <laughs> Not at all. So, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure that was a, a – maybe, maybe there's a little bit of a truth yeah. in, in that joke. Yeah, that he made. in a state of paranoia. Liberty – Liberty coming out of soup. Hand off. That's Pickett that falls forward. And he, and he got half a yard. Yeah, that's exactly what FIU needed. They got to keep him pinned back in here as they're trying to move the ball out. It's, uh, this is a big down for Liberty. You do not want to get stuck in a third and long on the ball on your own one yard line. FIU's done a good job against the Flames run game. They've held him to just over two yards a carry so far today. Pickett's still in there. Tries to get him jumping. Does. He has a free play. He's going to load up, launch downfield. Looking for Shaw. Instead, it's picked off. 
That is Richard Dames, twin brother of Richard, who you saw earlier. And now he'll have something else in common with his brother, an interception taken off the board. <laughs> yeah, two of them now. But Offside, defense, five-yard penalty. Second and out. doesn't that just tick off a head coach when you got them yeah. on, backed up on their – uh, a penalty like that and you give them that breathing room, that has to be so frustrating and, and for Butch Davis and his staff. Well, the hard part is the defensive line coach for FIU. He's got the hockey stick with the football taped on the end of it. Yeah, they do it yeah, every day. They yeah. hut, 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 hut. They don't, you don't move until they move that stick. And, and, and sure enough, he jumps off sides. That's a, that's a big penalty. Willis gives the picket, hit, dropped. Good tackle. That was Tyson Maeva. He's the transfer from Boise State. Again, one of those guys that we think could make a big impact. He had 61 tackles in 2018, second on the team for Boise State before getting dismissed from that program. Finds his way here, and he's going to be an impact player for them this season. Uh, that's middle linebacker play right there. Yeah. You see the play, accelerate through the play, make the tackle on the backfield. Really nice. Throw caught by Stubbs. Makes a man miss, turns it upfield, and he has the first down. Some toughness after the catch from DJ Stubbs. Stubbs, oh, by the way, he had originally committed to FIU. But then the coaching change, Butch Davis came in. Coach Davis said, ah, let's rethink this. Maybe uh, maybe you're not what I'm looking for. And he ended up finding his way to Lynchburg. The Flames sure glad he did. Willis going to tuck it now, try to run. Has some room, looking for a block. Oh, mama. Big block by Johnny Huntley. Johnny Huntley just put a man down. We'll see if we can see that in the replay. That's your tight end coming back and helping his quarterback out. You know, Johnny Huntley did put the smack down on him right here, but I'm a little surprised they didn't call this one of those blindside right, block penalties. You're exactly right. Watch this. Just, yeah, you, you see those? That's exactly what they're trying to trying to avoid this year, and they've really been tight on making those calls. I've that, seen a lot less called than other games. That was Dorian Hall. It's on the bad end of that one. So first down for the Flames. Clock ticking down towards five minutes to go here in the half. Lake checks down to his running back, Pickett, who makes the grab. And that's something we haven't seen a lot of from Liberty, is throwing to the running back side of the backfield. Yeah, that's a great sign of maturity by Malik Willis. He looks downfield, goes through his first progression, goes through his second progression, there's nothing there, and then there's nothing wrong, especially on first down, checking down to your back, picking up six yards. Willis now will give it to Pickett. And he'll be about a yard shy of what he needed for the first down. Jason Mercia on the tackle. Bring up third and short. And between Pickett and uh, J-Mac, they can just keep rotating these backs through, keeping them fresh, and trying to convert on these third and shorts. Be five of six on third down today. The handoff. That's Josh Mack. He had to work for it, but looks like he'll pick up the first down. So much talk about that Liberty running game mm -hmm. after their win against Western Kentucky. But really, it's been Malik Willis with his arm today. 12 of 15. Started 11 for his first 11. And he's done a good job of, of mixing it up. And if you try to really come in and stop the run, he's showing now that yes. he can still beat you over the top. He's going to look to throw it here. Running out of time. Shakes off one man. Shakes off another. Look out. Fires caught by Stubbs. Oh! They are breaking it all out on that play. The elusiveness first from Willis, then Stubbs made a man miss, and this Liberty offense does not lack for excitement. What I like about Malik Willis on that play right there. Now you saw FIU win a bunch of man-to-man -man coverage early in the game. Now they're switching up and they're going to more of a zone look, which is a lot harder for him to read, but he's able to stay alive. DJ Stubb finds that hole. That's really good execution by the Flames offense. Stubbs has played well so far today. Five catches, 65 yards. Now Josh Mack has some room to rumble. Across the 25, across the 20, down to the 15. Start extending these plays like Malik Willis is able to do. And FIU wants a timeout. Liberty offense starting to roll a bit. Also FIU thinking maybe 
We'll save ourselves some time to get the ball back before the break. Liberty in the red zone, trying to go in front. What a week three Monday night football matchup this is. Patrick Mahomes, the 2-0 Chiefs, take on Lamar Jackson, the 2-0 Ravens. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with Monday night countdown at 6. Joe, you know this, but third time in Monday night football history, the reigning league MVP, Lamar Jackson, squaring off against the Super Bowl champ. Wow. Just the third time. And history. I, history will be made. History will be made. On and Monday night. one thing, the Kansas City Chiefs are... Matt Warner's team. Well, that's that's his they better squad. play better than they did against the Chargers last week if they want to hang with Baltimore. Flames have the red zone. Hand off to Josh Mack. Good patience. Stutter step. And he gets down to the six yard line. Now you said it, Matt. Good patience. Nothing was really there at first, but you get behind that big offense lineman. Wait for it. Wait for it. Hit the cutback. Pick up eight yards in the red zone. This drive, remember, started at the one yeah. yard line. And you think about that. Defensive offsides penalty that gave him that little bit yep. of breathing room. That may have changed the whole thing. Mack remains in there now. He's rushed for 50 yards so far today. Willis going to keep it, hesitate, tries to get outside, does. Player has an angle on him, wrapped up and dropped. And that was Richard Dames that finally tracked him down, and he may have saved a touchdown. Yeah, really nice tackle by, by Dames on that play. What you saw right there is FIU in the red zone now has changed to a 3-4 defense, which then switches up the blocking schemes for Liberty from their traditional 4-3. It's much more difficult from a mental standpoint on offensive line to block a 3-4 defense than it is a 4-3. So I like the change up by the Panthers defense. Flames need to get to about the four-yard line for a first down. Big third down opportunity here. Willis going under center. They pitch the stops. He can throw it. Looking for the throwback to his quarterback. It's not there. In trouble and dropped. They snuffed that out and were able to make the play in the backfield. That's Alexi Jean Baptiste who tracked him down. That's a well-coached football team right there. They tried to run the old toss sweep, sneak the sneak Malik Willis out on the backside, but they were able to pick it up and see him, which uh, caused uh, Stubbs to be able to scramble and get tackled in the backfield. Good, solid, fundamental, disciplined football. So now a 36-yard attempt by Alex Barbier. It is up and no good. So the kicking game. 
Flames knew it could be a little shaky coming into the season. And they come up empty after that long drive. So the FIU defense stands tall. 114 to go in the half. Uh, socially distant Liberty Band in the upper deck across the way from us. Nice. It's good to have the band here. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was a big defensive oh. stop by the, FIU there. The timeout that Butch Davis took was perfect because they were getting gashed one play after another after another, called the timeout and put a stop to it right there. Caitlin Wiggins back in at quarterback. The give, Sean Peterson. Picks up about four before he stood up. Now Liberty has all their timeouts. Do you use them, Matt, or do you just take it to the house? I think they'll just be happy to get back in the locker room. Tied at 14. Liberty will receive the uh, opening kickoff of the second half. It's been the run game of FIU that, that's gotten the job done. They only have 16 passing yards in this game. Though. Yeah, not much, but that offensive line is moving some people. and. Had a great stop right before half defensively. And off stumbling a bit was Peterson. And maybe you use your timeout now, and it looks like the Flames will, as it'll be third and a long two, maybe three. Yeah, I like that. Clock upper. It's back on the game clock. So we came into the ball game saying, you know. FIU has to stop that Liberty rushing attack. Yeah. You feel like they've done a pretty good job of that so far in the first half. On the other side, we are saying, what, what does this Panther offense look like? Feel like they're establishing their identity yes. and it's on the ground. Yeah, it's definitely on the ground. Uh, uh, I think they realize how well, they're off, how well their offensive line has played and how they can run the football. Uh, so I, it's going to be interesting to see in this second half, will they come back to their starting quarterback or Will they continue with the dual threat quarterback? So uh, I, I, I'm sure they make these adjustments at halftime. And I think a big part of this for Liberty is now you have a half a film yeah. on FIU. And what type of halftime adjustments did they make 
in order to stop them defensively and put some points on the board offensively. Yeah, Max Bortenslager got the first couple of series for FIU. Actually led them on a scoring drive. Kalen Wiggins has since relieved him. Wiggins trying to run with it, cutting it back. He'll have the first down and cross the 40. So there you see the athleticism of Wiggins. That's what he brings to the table. That's right. He was stopped right there. He was stopped with no game, but was able to cut back against the grain and, and pick up a nice run. And like you said, his athleticism made that play. I think they're taking it to the gizzy. <laughs> it's time to take it to the. Well, this game started by taking it to the house. It did. Opening kickoff of the game, Lex Joseph took it the distance, yeah. put FIU in front. Since then, these offenses have traded blows, and we'll go to the break. All knotted at 14 all. We got a good one going here at Lynchburg. When we come back, Kevin Connors, Jim Moore will join us from the studio to get you all caught up on the happenings around college football. Liberty 14. Week four of the college football season. We are off and running with some great games early on. Kevin Connors here inside our Bristol, Connecticut studios. Joined, as always, by the coach, Jim Mora from Los Angeles. Coach, it's been great so far this season, but it helps to have the SEC back here. Let's get you caught up on things going on around the country, beginning in Oxford, Mississippi, number five, Florida, on the road. The debut of Lane Kiffin as the new head coach at Ole Miss before kickoff, both teams taking a knee as a sign of unity. Meantime, Coach, Joe Burrow was great last year, but the second best passer in the SEC passing yardage-wise was Kyle Trask. And he is off to a really fast start. He's on fire today. Uh, 
And, and you know what? Ole Miss is doing some good things. It's fun to watch Lane. Their defense is struggling a little bit, but Lane calls an aggressive game, and they can score fast, and we're getting a glimpse of what Ole Miss is potentially going to be down the road under Lane Kiffin. Safety. Matt Corral to Ontario Drummond have been great, but, Coach, it helps to have 71 yards on a pitch and catch here to Kyle Pitts. Well, they've got that speed. And Trask has so much confidence in his receivers. And you can see his experience there, standing in the pocket, letting things come open, and then delivering a really nice ball. 38-21 over on ESPN. Meantime, lone ranked matchup of the day in the SEC, Gus Malzahn and Auburn. Little homage to Pat Dye hosting Kentucky. Look at Cavassier smoke. You know, I, I really like Kentucky as a football team because they play the way you're supposed to play. They play really good defense, and they run the football, and they're effective throwing it. Here they had a little trouble tackling, and uh, Auburn showing its speed there to get it in the end zone. Bo Nix to Anthony Schwartz. They would score one play later. Good one on the SEC Network, 15-13. Auburn in front. Seven games in all on the schedule today in the SEC. How about four of the top six teams in America in the SEC? Alabama, of course, replacing Tua. LSU replacing Joe Burrow. But, Coach, they don't rebuild in the SEC. They like to say they reload, and they've done just that. Well, it's such a talented conference through and through. I mean, they get the best players in the country on a consistent basis. And as you said, you know, you look at those, those four teams that are in the top six, three of them are replacing their quarterback. The only returner is Trask, and you've seen what he's done. But Alabama's got a really good couple of quarterbacks, you know, in the mix, in Mac Jones and then, uh, and then uh, Bryce Young. Georgia's got three really good quarterbacks. When JT Daniels is cleared to play, I think we'll see him a little bit. Uh, you know, LSU with with uh, with uh, Miles Brennan, you know, we're going to see what he does this year. I think he won't be Joe Burrows, but he'll be effective and help that team win a lot of games. And of course, some great, great personality in the league again with Mike Leach there at Mississippi State. So great storylines as always in the SEC. Meantime, absolutely great storylines in the Big 12 whenever Oklahoma suits up, right? Spencer Rattler, the all-everything recruit. He's come on, coach, right away and made an impact. Kevin, this kid is, is super special. You just watch his body mechanics, the way he's able to move athletically in and out of the pocket, get his shoulders squared up to throw the ball downfield. Now, he's thrown several touchdowns today. He's also thrown a couple of interceptions. I'm not too worried about those. I think he'll overcome those with experience, but I am so impressed with his ability to show poise outside the pocket and put the ball where it needs to be. Look at him here, just standing in there, stay square, be patient, and put the ball right on the money. By the way, you saw the name Stoops there, Drake Stoops, Bob Sun hauling in a touchdown there, Oklahoma on top. Meantime, Louisville and Pitt, Panthers have Kenny Pickett, and he's slinging the ball. Pickett's a good-looking player, Kevin. I like what he's doing. They've got a really nice mix on offense between running the football effectively and a quarterback who can make plays through the air. They're a really good team at rushing the quarterback. Defensively, they're strong, although right here, J.B. and Hawkins gashes that D. Well, you can't coach speed, and you see speed right there. And we know about Louisville offensively is they have speed all over the place, and they can score in an instant. 23-17, the Pitt Panthers are on top. Meantime, Syracuse in action today. They're leading Georgia Tech right now. That game is at halftime 23-13. The Orange lead inside the Carrier Dome. And coach, it's a Syracuse team that and this is where they offensively they can get creative at times. But I know you like what they're doing this year on the defensive side of the ball. I do. They brought Tony Weiss in as the defensive coordinator from Arizona State. He's mixed things up. They're a little bit more aggressive. Uh, they're getting after the pass. I think the key for Syracuse is being able to run the ball effectively. They haven't been able to do that, and that leads to their quarterback getting harassed. But if you see in, in these few plays here, is their offensive line has done a nice job of holding up and giving their young quarterback a chance to get the ball downfield. Tommy DeVito to Taj Harris. Syracuse leading by 10 at the half. Liberty showing off the offensive firepower. They're the Flames at FIU, even at 14 at the break.
Are you ready for one of the biggest games of the season? I'm a pop star, not a doctor. Crown in my hand and I'm really playing. Keep awake. Are you ready for Monday night? Pop star, not a doctor. All right, time for a look at the All-State AFCA Good Works team, recognizing athletes for their charitable work off the field. Some of the biggest names in college football, Chuba, Trevor Lawrence, Sam Elling are on there. Great work by them to see all 22 players on the Good Works team. Log on to ESPN.com and search All-State. COVID continues to force challenges in the college football schedule. Notre Dame and USF postponed again this week. After a little bit of an outbreak on the campus in South Bend and Houston cannot get on the field to play their game against North Texas postponed as well. Other action around college football UCF East Carolina Holton Aylers coming off a terrific year last year Darius Pinnock 17 yard touchdown ECU led. And coach, the Knights get on the board. This this Knights team is can be a dangerous club. I think they, you know, they started out well. They ran the ball well. They played, played good defense. But you know, UCF is a special team. They've got a ton of talent at the skill positions. They play good defense. They take advantage of opportunities like this with takeaways. And then they've got a young man named Dylan Gabriel at quarterback, who I think is one of the special ones. In in this in this country the American offensive player of the week last week yeah. coach so look at this sling right here yeah and it, I don't know how a guy gets that open but he did there's a bust and the impressive thing is when a quarterback can come off a play, play action and still find a guy wide open downfield and Dylan Gabriel has great wide field vision he can see it all 41 an answer for the Knights over on ABC meantime camels and Mountaineers Campbell App State Hodge Malik Williams, little sneak, putting Campbell up 7 nothing. It's nice, Coach, when you can count on your running back, though, to get you 161 and three touchdowns. It's always great when you can run the ball. When you run the ball, Kevin, you can control the game, you can control the clock, you can control the tempo, and you can keep your defense on the, on the sideline. Big game so far for Daytrick Harrington. There's Hodge Malik Williams one more time. 30. 13 though Appalachian State leading Campbell they are in the third quarter of course coach under the lights tonight on ABC it's the great matchup Florida State and Miami 730 ABC streaming on the ESPN app this is a great rivalry so many memorable moments from it coach the big news the Florida State coach Mike Norvell a positive COVID test will not coach his Seminoles will have their hands full with the Eric King yeah, it, I'm excited to see Derek King take the next step in his development in this system. Now we know that he's an established player. We know he's a great player, but he's still still learning this system. He's still learning about the players that he can count on, the players that that are going to get open for him and make plays. Like right there, Brevin Jordan, who's a great player. Uh, I love the way he stands in the pocket and throws the ball, the way he can get out of the pocket and throw the ball, and then the way he recognizes when defensive backs are turned to him and he has an opportunity to run, and he runs and he scores touchdowns. He's not afraid to put his body in the line, and I think one of the things that's really helping Derek King early in this season is transitions to Miami's offense is Miami's run game has been spectacular. They have, and they've been Creative as well, a couple of big plays, 75 yard touchdowns, two of them last week in the win over Louisville. That game 730 Eastern on ABC tonight. Devontae Price, 75 yards on the ground and a touchdown. The Panthers in flames locked up in a good one at the half. 14 apiece.
You're watching the All-State Saturday Kickoff. Well, we thought this had the makings of a really good ball game coming in. It has lived up to that yes. so far today. 14-all between Liberty and FIU as we're about set to start the second half. Here's a look at those first half stats. Forget who needs passing yards. <laughs> FIU didn't need them in the first half. Just 16. They found success on the ground. The one thing, though, that really hurt them in half one, the penalties. Yeah, no doubt. The penalties, six for 60 yards, and they were penalties at a crucial time. Penalty on interception. Uh, penalties in the red zone. Uh, pass interferences, and then some penalties that killed drives. But you're going to have to throw the ball beyond pace to throw the ball for more than 32 yards in a game uh, to be able to win a football game. So uh, it looks like uh, Big Max is warming back up there and uh, may see him to, to start the second half for the Panthers. Now yeah, well, first the Flames going to get the football as they'll receive the opening kick of the second half. Take a look at Hugh Freeze. I mean when you got Hugh Freeze on one side. Butch Davis on the other. Oh, yeah. You know they're going to have their teams ready to oh, go. Yeah. Two high-level college coaches. Yep. And they have been going out of here today. And you look at, we'll show you the stats. This is dead even, not just on the scoreboard, but as far as the stats go as well. Flames going to get the ball first, see if they can't make something happen. Well, you know what we haven't talked about yet, man? What's that? It's good to see Hugh Freeze not. Coaching from a That's, hospital bed to start the season. Is, I think he'd agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This year was not an ideal start for Hugh Freeze. Speaking of the coaches, let's Hugh check Hugh in with Emily Austin. Austin. Guys, Coach touchdown. Freeze wasn't too happy going into the half. He said he's disappointed in the way his team is playing on both sides of the ball and actually special teams too. He feels like he also made some bad decisions calling plays in the first half as far as defensively. Freeze said we have to be ready for seven because he's going to run the ball and he adds an extra gap that we need to account for. For FIU, Coach Davis was pleased with his defense holding Liberty to just 71 yards rushing, but we lost some turnovers. He's, he's their best man to man beater on the field. So Flames able to pick up five on first down. Josh Mack still in the backfield. They give it to him. And he gets maybe to the nine-yard line. It'll bring up third and about four. Yeah, Liberty has had some stalls out, stalling out here in the in the red zone a couple times. This is a big third down for him right there. You saw the Panthers, what they did, the Panther defense did, is they played cover zero, brought the extra man down the box, really crowded the line of scrimmage expecting the run right there and was able to stop it for a short game. You wonder too, the field goal attempt by Barbier yeah. was so shaky. Right. You just wonder, even though this would be a chip shot if you don't convert yeah. here on third, what kind of confidence level does Hugh Freeze have in the yeah. kicking game right now? Could he be thinking we've got two downs to pick this up? Yeah, I think if this isn't a negative play, you got to kick the field now. Willis gonna sling it. Led his receiver Douglas a little too far. He had him, couldn't quite connect. So here comes the field goal unit. Barbier, an interesting story. Played at Penn State in 2017. Quit the program, left the program, came Was just a student here at Liberty for two years, not playing football. Decided to come and try out this year on the team, kicking. Oh, by the way, he's a bodybuilder. Yeah. If you couldn't yeah. tell, that's a look at these guys. Sleeves tight. That's a sun's out, guns out, baby. Good kick, up and through. And so the Flames go on top. They manage to get three points out of that drive, and Barbier back in the good graces of his. Coaching staff. I mean, he is pretty jacked. I mean, he made a tackle on a kick yeah. return earlier in this look ball at game. That. You look at him, he looks like a middle linebacker. He's 5'9, I mean, 220. They call him Quadzilla. <laughs> look at those quads. Yeah, he's a big one. Now, I would probably guess there's not a lot of kickers across yeah. the country that are 
also <laughs> bodybuilders. <laughs> you don't see that combo if they, a lot. If they had a, if they, if they had a kicking convention, he'd be pretty intimidating. Yeah. 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 I think he would hold the intimidation factor over all the other kickers. He was actually one of the top kickers in high school. Country when he came out and committed to Penn State. Yeah. So Flames had their kicker from a year ago, Alex Probert, transfer out. He ends up stepping in and taking over the job. Yeah, you really need a kicker. A big believer, you need a kicker that can kick the ball deep in the end zone on these kickoffs. As you saw in the first uh, play of the game where they were able to take the ball back for a touchdown on a 100-yard kickoff return. you got to be able to get these balls deep in the end zone that are unreturnable. Joseph awaits this one. The opening kick all the way back. He's going to have an opportunity here. Takes it at the six. Tripped up, dropped it about the 24-yard line. Liberty doing a much better job after the first two kickoffs. Obviously, were very shaky, but doing a much better job of shedding blockers, staying in their lane, and squeezing down to be able to make the tackle. So now we await, see which quarterback emerges for FIU. It looks like it's going to be a third quarterback. Yeah, third. Stone Norton. We'll spin the wheel, see who it lands on, and send him on out there. Stone Norton, redshirt freshman out of Nashville, Tennessee. See, giving us our third quarterback on the day. Well, we thought we'd see two, and I know they've said, you know, they've been high on this Norton kid in camp. As we get, what, a delay a game out of the shoot? That's, wow. that's not ideal. Wow. So that'll back him up in the penalty. Continue to plague FIU here today. There's a look at Stone Norton. Stone Norton. Stone, Stone Norton is a great football. Player. It is a good like Sounds like straight out Friday Night Lights. Yeah. yeah. He's gonna pull it, sling it, and right through the hands of JJ Holloman. Holloman, we've talked a lot about his talent yeah. coming in, but he's only in, has the one reception for 11 yards. Yeah, they have to start getting him the ball. You have to find different ways to get him. Put him in the slot and make things happen. Uh, get the ball in the run game. He's just such an explosive athlete. They really got to do a better job of trying to get the ball into his hands. So second 15, Devontae Price in the backfield. He went for 75 yards on the ground the first half. Norton breaks one tackle, won't break the second. Hit and dropped, and that was. The second sack of the day for Darrell Johnson. Darrell Johnson, really good football player, came from ASA Junior College. And uh, he has been a, a, a bright, shining star for Liberty in the first game against Western Kentucky. In this game also, he's long, he's athletic. At one point in his career, he played free safety, as we know, Matt, and now has uh, moved to defensive end and, and, and wreaks havoc in that backfield. Third and a ways to go here. The redshirt freshman Stone Norton in this FIU offense. Norton stands in the pocket. Now wrapped up and dropped. That flames the offensive line getting to him, and that was Trey Shot Clark. Clark and Johnson really flashed away. A week ago for this Liberty defense, and they're both playing really well off the edge today. Yeah, if you want to be able to play good defensive football, you have to be able to rush four, drop seven, and get to the quarterback. And you can see Trayshawn Clark just pushes the guard right back. Spiraling punt. Mario Douglas didn't catch it. He kind of ran away from it. He'll bounce down inside the 40. 
And that's where Liberty will take over. So the Flames got the field goal on their first drive of the second half. They'll get it back now with great field position. Uh, Sunshine State rivalry is tonight's Saturday night football matchup. The Eric King and the number 12 Hurricanes host Florida State at Hard Rock Stadium. Canes have won the last three against the Knolls after losing seven straight dating back to 2010. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app for Saturday night football presented by Capital One. So Liberty gets the ball back here and a chance leading by three on this drive to really kind of start to create some separation here. Yeah, Defense little... did their job. They were dominant yep. on that first offensive series for FIU to give the ball right back to Malik Willis and company. And you saw that false start there by Liberty. That was Jerome Jackson, the tight end. Kind of lose your momentum. Yeah. Yeah, starts to go. He put his hand up on the offensive lineman trying to catch himself. Coach Freeze may not agree as the officials continue to talk it over. Yeah, he was just leaning into it a little bit. Delay of game. Ooh. Defense. Whoa. Disconcerting signals. Five yard penalty. Oh, the old disconcerting signals. I remember back in my younger days. Yeah. Yeah, you take a young lady out and you see, get some disconcerting <laughs> signals coming. You remember those days, Joe Yock? But you don't see it as much on the football field. You don't see as much yeah. on the football field as you saw it. There, yeah. there you saw right there. Yeah. You saw Jackson leaning forward a little bit, but another penalty going against FIU. Jedro Lewis just checked into the ball game. His first action. Yeah, where's Jedro Lewis been? Jedro's kind of been like the closer. Yeah. You know, they brought him in in, in the second yeah. half against Western Kentucky, and he broke a long touchdown run. He's a wide receiver that's been 
moved to running back, and he is explosive. What's, what's my nickname for Shedra Lewis? What is your nickname? Mighty Mouse. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Just a reminder, you're watching the All-State Saturday kickoff. Liberty and FIU locked up in a good one here in the second half. Malik Willis going to give it to Shedro, trying to bounce it outside, couldn't get away. That was Jamal Gates, got his clutches on him and got him to the ground. He had 85 tackles a year ago, and now there's an injured player down on the field. That's Alexi Jean Baptiste. Yeah, looks like he rolled his ankle pretty bad, grabbed it right away. So they'll take a look at him, try to get him back on track. All right, time now to take a look at today's protection spotlight brought to you by Allstate. Joe, this was a whew, big block downfield by the tight end Johnny Huntley. We thought it might even get flagged. Yeah. It did not. It's Huntley with a big oh. shot on Dorian Hall. You know what, you know what that block was, man? Was that? That was the Allstate umbrella policy right there. That, that, that covered it all. <laughs> that block covered it all. Tough break for this FIU defense as Gene Baptiste is helped off the field. Arkansas transfer who led the team in sacks last year at five and a half. So it looks like his day may, may well be done as he makes his way off the field. Chedro Lewis remaining in the backfield for the Flames. Panthers in man to man. Cover one. Straight across the board. Flush formation for the for the Flames, do a little switch here, trying to get DJ Stubbs. I believe that DJ Stubbs on the matchup on the inside. Willis has time, stands in the pocket, fires, connects. Catch made by Shaw, makes one man miss, tries to get loose and is drugged down by Richard Dames. Matt, that was an absolutely gorgeous offensive concept by Hugh Freeze. He gets switches, gets into the bunch, bunch mo formation, runs the dig route, turns, runs the post corner. He had either guy. He could have gone to Stubbs, could have gone to Shaw. That was just beautifully executed. And now they go with that tempo offense. Yeah. FIU. And FIU yeah. forced timeout. to use a timeout. Yeah. So it'll be their first charge timeout of the half. They know. So you get into that warp package, it can cause that to happen. Oh, Malik this is Willis beautiful football. Has been dialed in throwing the rock today, and he and his flames are driving. Flames driving, FIU called the timeout, try to 
settle things down a bit as this Liberty high tempo offense was starting to hum. Malik Willis now 16 of 20 for a buck 95 through the air today. Thought he was just a runner. He's shown you a lot of other skills, and this is his second start for the Flames. The Auburn transfer hadn't started a game since state championship in high school. Yeah, and, and, and the most impressive thing about his passing game is his accuracy. He is a very accurate throwing quarterback. Jedro Lewis still in there at the running back spot. Malik rolls, fires, connects. That's Shaw. And the first man miss, and that will get about a yard shy of that first down marker. By the way, Gene Baptiste, who we saw and helped off the field earlier, is making his way to the locker room now. So, tough break for that young man. Chevro Lewis, hand off, shoots his way through for the first down. Chevro is so small, 5'8", as you see Gene Baptiste heading to the locker room. 5'8", it's, it's hard to find him. Yeah, He's no kind of ducking around behind those offensive linemen. It's hard for a defense to kind of find where he is. You see what Liberty's doing right now, attacking the outsides of the field in the passing. That replay right at the end, that little bit of movement after he hit. And they're holding everything up as the officials decide if they want to look at it or not. Players just standing there waiting to see if they're going to be able to kick this extra, extra point. I'll, I'll tell you this, Matt, as great as a catch as that was, if this stands, was as great of the throw as it was. Early on the field of a touchdown is under further review. So they will take a look at it, and I think you're right, Joe, and we'll yeah. take a couple more looks at it as well. The catch initially looked good, but then there was that kind of bobble at the end. So we'll see if that stands. If it does, Liberty had one of the best catches of any no, in any game yeah. last week, C.J. Yarbrough, yeah, Yarbrough. one-handed grab. They might have another uh, one. Top ten. Making Sports Center tonight if this holds up. Oh yeah, that'll make it. Look at. So it secure. Yes. Good there, and then here's where it gets dicey. Boy, that I, you know what? It looked like the ground may have. It's right there. so late. I think though. right there it moved. What and is that's the, probably going to get wiped off. I think so. What is I think the so. college rule? Like it, right there, you go. Is the play over in my touchdown professional opinion, Joe? Well, yeah. I think they're going to call this one back. You know what, Matt? Just for kicks and giggles, I'm going to say they're going to they're going to leave it alone. Touchdown. I think the play was over. Just so he can be on opposite ends, and I know how you like to play this <laughs> replay right. game with yeah. me every year. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, we'll so we'll see who goes on top. Now we're opposite. Put this see. on the scoreboard. Yeah, we'll see where it stands at the end of the year. Yeah. You've bought. The ruling on the field stands. Yeah. Wow. Oh, there you go. Oh, 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 oh. Why do you even mess I, with me, Warner? Why? That's why they call you Eagle Eye. Hey, Eagle Eye Joe. Incredible grab by Stubbs. Incredible day. 119 yards on eight receptions. And now that touchdown as the Flames with this extra point can go up 10.
We'll have game six of the Eastern Conference Finals between the Celtics and Heat tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern. NBA Countdown gets our coverage started at 6.30 on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. What, what does he mean? He's like, these guys put a lot of thought into these right. things. You got to understand what, what they're... What they mean? You've even been known to try to teach a few. Yeah, I have celebrations. Yeah. Sacks. Uh, I taught Jesse Lemon a sack dance. Never used it. <laughs> <laughs> so the Flames up by ten. And it's Stone Norton still in there at the quarterback position for FIU. Did not see him at all in the first half. He's gotten the first two series here, and he connects with Holloman on the reception, and that will be good for an FIU first down. See, to me, that right there, Matt, looks more like what Stone, Stone Norton is made for, sitting in the pocket, throwing the ball. And off Price. Got an angle. Side to the sideline, and he is still in bounds. Somehow he stayed in, and he's taking it all the way to the house. How did he tighten the, the sideline and stay in bounds? Unbelievable. The Flames had about three people there with a shot to bump him out, and they couldn't do it. Take a look. What a great run by Price. He never wow. gave up on the run. Never assume you're going to be able to get pushed out of bounds. For him to be able to get the edge on that, on the corner right there, and be able to get his put on the Jets and get upfield and stay in bounds. What an outstanding, exactly what the doctor Man. ordered for the Panthers. Talk about an answer. 65-yard touchdown scamper. He's up to a buck 40 on the ground and a couple of scores today coming out party for Devontae Price. Extra point is up and through, and just when the Flames start to think, all right, hey, you got a little breathing room here. Not so fast, my friends, as my <laughs> buddy Lee Corso would say. We got ourselves a good old-fashioned football game. Love it. The running game for FIU. Going to get shoved out of bounds. He stayed with it, which is an outstanding job by Price. Mentioned he was the guy that kind of been waiting in the wings, just waiting to get his opportunity to be the lead back. It's finally his chance, and he's made the most of what it today. Start. You want to really stake a claim to that starting role. He's done just that. Jedro Lewis back to return this kick for Liberty. And he will take a knee. So now on the other side, you know, this Panther defense, wh what are the answers? Well, how do you slow down Will yeah. Malik Willis? You've done it really in the run game. So in theory, yeah. you'd say, if you just looked at his rushing stats, you'd say, well, we've really done our job. We must be in a good spot. What what Liberty has done is they, they have shown, Malik Willis and the receivers have shown, that they can effectively beat the man-to-man -man coverage. I like in the set late in the second quarter where FIU defense started mixing up some cover two, cover three, and some different zone looks. So I expect them to see more of that. Willis gives it to Josh Mack, and he goes nowhere. Hit and dropped. That was Nate White that got in there and made the tackle. Redshirt freshman. Hey, there's also nothing better for a defense than when your offense busts off a 65-yard run and gets you back in the ball game. Liberty's favorite set, offset tight end, three receivers. Willis climbing in the pocket, fires near side, caught by Shaw, surrounded. As he gets just across the 30, will at least set up third and manage. And, and honestly, for a guy, we talk about Willis, hasn't started in years until last week. I've been impressed with his yeah. patience and not taking unnecessary shots down the field. Correct, no turnovers. He had that one ill-advised throw that was wiped off the interception because of a penalty. But other than that, he's not forcing a lot. Once again, big third down, both sides of the ball. Willis has time, stands tall, fires, caught by Britt, breaks one tackle, 
and gets to the 45 of FIU. Time and time again on third down. Willis has been up for the challenge, and the Flames are now 8 of 11 converting on third down opportunities. And he's throwing darts. He is throwing darts. Noah Frith is a large target, ran the inside dig route against zone coverage, found the honey hole, was able to, Willis sticks it right in there, first down. Nate Pickett on the carry, and he's got some room. And then it just disappeared really quickly. <laughs> Richard Daines came up. And he put an end to that, and he may need uh, somebody to come take a look at him. He came in and delivered a good hit on Pickett. And he got the worst of it, it would appear. Shame, I hate to see that, because that was such a great open field tackle. As we mentioned, Richard, twin brother, Richard, also on this defense, those two brothers, Really good playmakers. And this secondary, that's another thing when you're talking about the game. This secondary was really good last year yep. for FIU. They brought back a lot of talent. And that makes what Malik Willis has been able to do today that much more impressive because they were a yep. really good defense against the pass. I think he might have the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, you hope that's all it is and he can get back out there. He is an important part of that defense. That was a really nice run play by Liberty. That, you know what that was, Matt? What was that? That was the old Washington Redskins. Do you remember the Hogs from back then? Oh, yeah. yeah, the old Hogs, the old counter tray. Yeah. Big Grimm and Jacoby pulling around there, pull the guard and tackle, bring around, kick him out, back hits up in there. You gotta love the old school football right there. The counter tray, Joe Gibbs. This offensive line, their veteran group, they've been together a long time. And this is, I mean, this offense leans and counts on them quite a bit in the run game, and they have continued to produce. Now flags fly. Everybody pointing oh, at each other. Yep. I think this one's going to go into flames, unless there were more disconcerting signals. Yes. Go. Never should never count out the disconcerting signals. Cool. Delay of game. Defense yeah. delay of game number 59. Disconcerting ah. signals. Disconcerting Five yard penalty. They First all, out. Yeah, it, you, you laugh, but disconcerting signals are they're real. Yeah. They're a real thing. You don't want to get charged with too many disconcerting signals. You do not. It's not a good place to be. The penalty is really starting to mount. 11 of them now on FIU. They're going to roll the pocket here. Willis sidearm slings it, caught by Shaw, makes a man miss, and is bumped out of bounds inside the 15, and a late flag comes in. We may have a late hit on the quarterback here. What a throw. I'm, like, speechless right now on that throw. He is... Flipping the passer, defense number 43. The penalty will be had the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. Nate White. Call for roughing the passer, but to throw as accurately as he has on the run today. On the run with his with his shoulders turned in the wrong direction. That was just an all-muscle, athletic, accurate throw. You, you, you can't say enough about Malik Willis, not just as a runner, as a complete player. So first and goal now from the seven. Peyton Pickett trying to get around the edge. Broke a couple of tackles, turns the corner, and somehow picks up two yards on a run that looked like yeah. he was dead in the backfield. Yeah. Looks like he was way dead in the backfield, able to keep that run alive and, and get away from the scraping linebackers and still pick up a yard or two is pretty impressive. It looks like Richard Dames coming back in this ball game, so that's good, good. news for the Panther team. Two choices here, man-to-man -man up top, man-to-man -man down low. Bill's going to keep it, lunges forward, and he'll be down at about the three. Richard Dames, we just mentioned, coming up to make that tackle. You know, Matt, we know we're only you know five minutes to go in the third quarter here, a little over five minutes to go in the third quarter, but you start looking at this, and if, if the Panthers' defense can hold Liberty to a field goal right here and keep this a one-score game, uh, this is a big, big play in the game. Third and goal from about the two and a half, almost the three. Go Willis under center here. 
Fakes the pitch, rolling right. Looking, sidearm throw. Swinging it a little wide, looking for the freshman C.J. Daniels. He was first looking for his tight end. He was yep. covered up. And then Daniels also covered well, and he's had to kind of throw it away. Yeah, really liked how they played, played that that right there, the bunch formation, fake the toss sweep. And Panthers did a great job on defense. Let's check in with the Emily Austin once again. Emily? Yeah, guys, as you mentioned, Richard Dames back in the game. He was having his left arm evaluated over here on the sideline with the FIU trainer. So it looks obviously he seems good to go, but he was doing quite a few exercises with that left arm. Now, they're glad they got him back in there. He had a nice tackle on Willis a moment ago. So Barbier comes in for the chip shot field goal. Up and through, and the Flames knocking on the door, but couldn't get the touchdown. You call that a win for the FIU defense. Absolutely. Red zone touchdowns instead of field goals sometimes decide football games. So uh, I know Butch Davis is happy right now to keep this within one score. Well, FIU ends up winning this ball game. You're going to look back on that drive. Yep. You're going to look back on the drive in the second or in the late in the first half. Correct. Where they ended up missing the field goal as two key missed opportunities for the Flames offense. Yeah, they tried to run on that, that drive late in the first half, and they tried to run the, the toss to Stubbs and throw back to Malik Willis, and he ended up getting sacked, which pushed them further out of field goal range, and, and then weren't able to convert on the field goal before half. Those are all the red zone game-changing plays. So the Flames up by six, and really you think if you're Butch Davis right now, and you have 12 penalties for 112 yards. You're kind of looking at the scoreboard saying, Butch, thank goodness we're, <laughs> we're within range here. Thank goodness we're this close. Because there have been so many there's so many times where they've shot themselves in the foot with penalties today, and yet they're right in this ball game. Let me add to that, Matt. The only penalties, 30 yards total passing. Yeah. Their catch was called for there by Lexington Joseph. Take a look at what Devontae Price has done today. The lead back for the Panthers, and it has been a day to remember. Really like his patience and really like his vision. Shows the patience, cuts back, and then here's the play. Don't ever give up on the play along the sidelines. No, he's getting you out. Stay in bounds. Take it to the house. 140 yards on 10 carries, a couple of touchdowns. Yeah, you might need to stretch out a little bit after that last run. Yeah, stay loose. He's going to get plenty more carries. Stone Norton remains in. He's been the only quarterback we've seen in the second half for FIU, the redshirt freshman. Throwing it near side. That was nearly jumped. Great job in coverage by Emmanuel Dabney. A dangerous pass as he was trying to find J.J. Holloman. Yeah, whenever you're trying to throw the back shoulder fade, it's so important to have your time. You can't hold on to the ball too long. Stone Norton held on the ball just a tad bit too long. You want to get to that back shoulder so your receiver's the first one to get there. Two backs in the backfield. They give it to Peterson. He's able to push the pile for about five. And quickly, you're in a big third down spot. Yeah, it's time for Liberty to defensively to bow their neck a little bit here and, and get a stop on third down after not being able to push Price out of bounds on the long run. It's uh, They need to, to make a momentum swing and play themselves. Sean Peterson remains in the backfield alongside Norton. Calling it third and six. Norton. Rolling out, throws across his body and connects. Big time third down conversion to his tight end, Sterling Palmer. Haven't called his name really at all today. He's the leading returning receiver on this team. Really good looking junior tight end. Great job by Panthers offensive line to pick up the twist. Now the handoff goes to Peterson. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. You know, on that last play, Matt, you got to give Stone Norton credit. The offensive line did a good job. Liberty tried to run an inside twist game. The offensive line picked it up, but then he showed the patience to buy himself a little bit of time, move outside the pocket, and then to be able to deliver a strike down for a first down. So, like what he's done, I see why they're sticking with him as, as well as he's throwing the ball right now. Yeah, I mean, you had the two veteran quarterbacks, yeah. Bortenslager and Wiggins. You thought, well, one of those two guys will kind of be the man. But 
Cooper Davis go with the youngster here. Stands in, delivers a strike a little bit behind his tight end, Palmer, but he's able to snag a good hands catch by the big fella. He'll bring up third and short. Yeah, watch Norton right here. He does a good job with his footwork. Steps up in the pocket, like I said, a little bit on, catches away from the body. Good job. Really like how this how this young man's throwing the football. He's starting to do some good things. They got they had 30 yards passing. It's time to get a little bit of that pass again. Yeah. I think he's their guy. Third and short. Peterson stands behind Norton. They give it to him. Angling far side, stiff arm. They're able to pick up about five. Tough running for Sean Peterson Jr. He's 6'3", 215. He's a big boy when he gets rolled. No doubt. That's the old watch. Old school. Oof. Oof. That's an old school stiff arm right there. Shot right to the face of Aaron Pierre. Under two minutes to go here in the third quarter. FIU with the chance to take a lead in this ball game if they can find the end zone. Norton stands in, delivers one deep down the middle of the field. He's got a man, touchdown! Bryce Singleton gets behind the Flames defense, and Norton with a picture-perfect ball right to him. Very, very pretty post route right here. Fake the jet sweep, had man-to-man -man coverage, no safety in the middle. Where do you attack with no safety, cover zero, down on the deep post route. That corner's got to protect to the inside. Reese wasn't able to protect to the inside and threw a very nice ball for a touchdown. Very well executed. Attack the right area of the field at the right time. Extra point up and through, and FIU goes in front. Stone Norton, the redshirt freshman, coming off the bench in the second half, and he has provided a spark. Whew. Throw the ball like that. Nice. Not only that, he had some pressure in his face on that play as well and still delivered a perfect strike down the middle of the field. I mean, not only does Stone Norton have the name Stone Norton, which is a great quarterback name, he also has the flow to go with it. He does. All right, well, Joe, now it's time for the AT&T 5G best moment from today. Let's see what it is, Joe. I'm holding. What is it? You as I haven't seen about it. this as I am. I don't know what this is. Oh, it's the oh, run. It's the run. The run from Devontae Price, the 65-yard touchdown run where he managed to stay in bounds. Took it the distance. That is our AT&T 5G best moment of the day. And he's still smiling. Yeah. You didn't catch what Price did at the end of that run, did he? I respect what he did. What did he do? Very cool. As he ran through the end zone, he's coming. He looked at the camera and he threw a piece. Ah, that's, yeah. I mean, that's that guy, just that's that guy knows where the cameras are. At. Awareness there, veteran move. <laughs> yes. You're not going to get that from a freshman. He goes into the end zone for a touchback. the ball the 25. So now it's the Flames' turn to try to answer a back and forth game here today. Malik Willis. Has moved the ball well. They have had trouble though punching it in when they've gotten into the red zone. Got to start scoring the red zone. So that's two drives in a row where Liberty's defense has given up two touchdowns. As we get late into the third quarter, we're going to see if this thing turns into an offensive shootout. Liberty back in that three wide receiver look with the offset tight end, one back. Have a lot of options out of this formation. Willis pulls it out, looking downfield, running out of time, hit, falls free. And Johnny Huntley falls on it. Oh, Willis took a shot. That could have been the play of the game yes. right there if FIU is able to cover it up. Flames very fortunate to keep possession of this. Another look. The, the Ran out of time in yeah. a hurry. That was Tevin Jones that got in there. Now Willis swings it out of the backfield. Caught by Mack, nearly lost his footing and is able to pick his way across the 20 to at least get back a chunk of that yardage. It'll still be third and long. 
really like what the Panthers are trying to do defensively. They're now they're getting back in away from the man to man cover and starting to mix up some zone and give some different looks. That get, can get a little bit confusing uh, for the quarterback and the receivers. Third and 13. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Josh Mack still in the ball game, standing alongside Malik Willis. You have to escape pressure, steps up. Now he's going to have to try to run it himself. Tripped up initially, still on his feet, lunging towards the first down, and he's going to be, looks like, half a yard yep. shy. Oh, decision time now. Very athletic play by... They're going to call it a full yard shy, and it looks like Hugh Freeze might leave the offense on the field. Well, if you believe in this offensive line, and they have talked them up all week long, you might just go for it on fourth, but we won't find out until the fourth quarter. Some time to think about it, Joe. The drama continues. Big fourth down coming for the Flames. Well, first we check in with Emily. Matt, if you look closely on the back of every single Liberty helmet, there is this decal, hashtag created equally. Coach Free said that the entire team came together for three straight days to have open, raw, intense dialogue about social equality. Quarterback Malik Willis said that this meant so much to him personally to play for a team and a university who not only listens 
to his voice, but takes action so quickly and a movement that means so much to him. And the entire Liberty football team actually all registered to vote on Tuesday morning. So really cool to see what this program is doing to help with social equality and make a positive change. Yeah, and it's not just been the Liberty football team. All athletics are involved. Men's basketball as well was very involved in, in that as well. As the Flames offense is going to stay on the field. Fourth and one. It's a big one. This Start the fourth quarter. One. We got ourselves a doozy, Matt. Michael Bollinger in there for the Flames. They got the beef. They got the big beef in there. Josh Mack in the backfield. They give it to Mack. He breaks through the line. And he's got some room to rumble across midfield, across the 30, and he's pushed out of bounds about there. So you get everybody around the line of scrimmage. You get that crease, and it turns into a big play. Great run by Josh Mack, but you know what the best part about that whole run was? Guess who was leading him down the field? Malik Willis was right behind him. <laughs> had the ball, but chased with him down the field. Oh, and, 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 and J. Mack still's got the spectacles. We always love the spectacles. So a huge fourth down conversion. Matt closing in on another 100-yard rushing day. He's up to 94 yards on the ground. Willis pulls it out. Fires to Shaw. Was he able to corral it? And it appears so. Yeah, it's good to see Kevin Shaw making some catches. He had a lot of targets last week against Western Kentucky, but had some drops along the way. So he's made some plays here today. Glenn's offense going quick. They give it to Mack. Lowers the shoulder. Moves the pile. That'll be enough for a first down. Oh, by the way, Josh Mack in this ball game has gone over 3,000 career rushing yards. He was great early in his career at Maine, one of the best running backs in all of the FCS. Transferred to Liberty, was fantastic last year, and is off to a great start in 2020. Some movement up front. Now they fire it deep towards Shaw as a flag reigns in. So another penalty, and penalties have been a problem for FIU. Offside, defense number 94, five-yard penalty, first down. Oh, Matt. Matt. 13 penalties now mm. against the Panthers. Those offsides penalty, Matt, remind me of our pickleball games together. He just got caught cooking in oh. the kitchen right there. Yeah, yeah that, <laughs> that comment reaches a very specific demographic. <laughs> And, and they may all actually be at dinner right now. <laughs> You're watching the All-State Saturday kickoff. Liberty FIU, Malik Willis going to keep it, picking his way through the defense and gets down to about the six-yard line. This is where Liberty needs to convert. FIU's done a great job of holding the field goals in the red zone. The old bend but don't break yep. thing on defense. That has been the name of the game for FIU today. Can the Flames punch it in? Wide receivers near side. JV Lofton up top. Bring Demario Douglas across the formation. Willis now gets it to his tight end who rumbles down to the two yard line. Jerome Jackson on the reception as the Flames continue inching their way towards the end zone. I like how Liberty's trying to go fast here in the and hurry up in the into the red zone. So hopefully they can. Now they bring in that heavy package. Michael Bollinger checking back in. So they ran the same formation. They ran the bootleg and the toss sweep off of. Here comes the toss. Josh Mack cuts it up and breaks the play and he's in. So Josh Mack converted on the fourth and one. And then they get on the doorstep of the end zone and they ride their lead back for the touchdown. The Flames look like they're now going to go for two. Really nice job by J. Mack and the Liberty. Offensive line, tight ends, get into that heavy package, get the bunch formation. Hat on hat, run the toss sweep. You only got to pick up a couple yards. They'd run the bootleg off it before, but weren't successful. Came back to the toss sweep like they had done earlier in the game and had that same success. Big two point conversion right here. Yeah. Lynch trying to push that lead to seven there. Having some confusion on the substitutions. They're running guys in and out. Still 15 seconds on the play clock. And now 
Bayou doing the same, subbing in. Peyton Pickett in the backfield with Willis. She get a roll out here. Here it comes, near side. Willis looking back, now trying to cut it up, running into some trouble, and he is stuffed. So once again, in close quarters, that FIU defense has enough to get the job done. And they keep it a five-point ball game. But Liberty goes on top. Back and forth, these offenses go. Josh Mack, the touchdown plunge, puts Liberty up five. Gorgeous day in Lynchburg, Virginia. And now it's time for our Fansville College Football Update brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Auburn, Kentucky, played a little bit earlier today. Auburn ended up hanging on in that one, 29-13. But the story of the oh. day, upset brewing, Joe Yock. K-State leading Oklahoma by three late in the fourth. And it looks like they just got the ball back in interception. So it looks like they're going to close that one out and knock off the number three team in the nation. Bill Snyder. Bill is. Snyder. Unbelievable. Does it again. How about that guy? Unbelievable. What a career. They will be celebrating in the Little Apple tonight, I can tell you that. The Little Apple? The Little Apple, Manhattan, Kansas. Yeah. Okay. Come on now. I don't know about the Little Apple. Well, folks, at FIU are celebrating the Stone Norton experience. Yes, he has been Stone fantastic Norton. here in the second half. Four of six, 79 yards and a touchdown. And he is looking like I mean, he may just be snatching this job and making it his yeah. own the way he's played here in yeah, the, the second half of this ball game. Yeah, they they run the football real well with just straight running backs in the running game. But his ability to throw the ball has brought another dimension. Give it to Price, angling far side, and he will pick up uh, about five on first down. Second five, Price now up to 145 yards on the day. Two back formation, haven't seen this much with the offset tight end. 21 personnel. Norton looking to throw, under pressure. Now heads up play, dropping it off to his running back, Lex Joseph. 
Yeah, he's pushed out of bounds there by Tyron Dupree along the far side. Yeah, that's, a, that's even a good job by Norton. There was nothing there. They tried to run a couple level routes, had a short level, high level. Uh, Liberty had covered both, waited patiently in the pocket, and was able to check it down to his back. Didn't get sacked, didn't take a negative play. Big third down and five for both teams right now. Price remains in the backfield. Big opportunity for the redshirt freshman Norton here. Holloman up top and man-to-man -to -man coverage. Here comes the pressure. Stands in, throws that way, looking for him. And we're going to get a flag coming in. Flag reigning in as Chris Meganson. Pretty obvious pass interference. Ball maybe pass a little underthrown. Defense number four. 50-yard penalty, automatic first down. I was going to say a little under yeah. throw, and the receiver tries to come back to it. Meganson didn't have his head turned around, and he ran right through the chest. Yep, you saw right there. Yeah, that's a good call. It's a, the, the under throw is actually a, a blessing there because yeah. he didn't have bad coverage. The under throw caused, caused the interference call. So this time it's a liberty penalty that moves the chains. We've seen FIU have some issues in that regard today but that Liberty pass interference gives the Panthers a first down Norton running out of time Trey shot Clark coming Norton just forced to throw it away as he got drilled from behind I'll tell you what Norton even under pressure has made good decisions yeah you want to write a young yep. guy getting out there yep. for the first time is it gonna is the stage gonna be too big right. it hasn't been Trayshawn Clark and Darrell Johnson get after the quarterback. And like you said, just the simple fact that you put yourself in a second and 10 instead of a second and 17 is a major difference in your play calling. Price, the handoff. Hit and dropped after about a four yard gain. Anthony Butler, grad transfer from Charlotte, able to wrap him up and take him down. I really like this Price kid. This kid it runs hard. Even yeah. on the short runs when he's picking up two and three yards, He's a punishing runner, and that, had, that pays its dividends as, as the fourth quarter will wear on. And he's also shown he's got that breakaway speed. Absolutely. We saw on the long touchdown run. Just a good all-around football player. Third and seven. Norton climbs the pocket, hit, dropped. Trace John Clark was the first one to get there. Darrell Johnson helped finish him off. Those defensive ends for the Flames get home again. Yeah, those two are really cranking it up. The thing about that play right there is they had Holloman once again singled up at the wide receiver position one on one, and he actually had a little bit of space on Megason, but Norton wasn't able to step up in the pocket and be able to deliver the long throw. But great pressure by Treshawn Clark and Darrell Johnson. They are getting after the quarterback. So Tommy Heatherly in to punt it away. Mario Douglas deep, waves for the fair catch, and makes it at about the 17. So Liberty leading by five, gets it here with 9.44 to go. A huge possession coming up in this ball game as the Flames offense takes the field.
This is the All-State Saturday kickoff presented by All-State. Get a quote today. Great offensive performances today on both sides. As the Flames have the ball up five. By the way, one of, correct, we were giving Bill Snyder credit for yeah. that kid. Chris Kleeman, the yeah. head coach. But you know what? Bill Snyder, I'm still giving him some credit <laughs> for what he did all those years at K-State as they knocked off the number three team in the nation today. Look out, ahead of the oh. pack. Oh, Demario Douglas had nothing but green grass ahead of him. Had Malik Willis been able to connect. Boy, he'd love to have that one back. Yeah, that's, I, I'm going to say that's his only inaccurate throw I think I've seen today, and that had potential as a touchdown throw. No safety in the middle of the field. Had Demario Douglas in the slot position, the best position you can be in to attack the middle of the field and, and just miss the strike. Second down now, Peyton Pickett has checked in at running back. Ooh, a little movement on that defensive line, and now was there a little movement on that Flames offensive line? You always get all the pointing going on there, Joe. Pointing. No one, no one wants nobody, to take responsibility in that wants situation. Nobody to fess up. Yeah. Snap infraction. Number 65. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Move the ball, I imagine. It's Big Thomas Sargent. Started every game he's ever played for the Flames. The sergeant is in charge of that line. So second and 15 now. Willis gives it to Pickett. Lowers the shoulder, keeps those legs churning as he's able to just cross the 20-yard line. Good run by Peyton Pickett. Way to finish the run, like you said. Kept his legs churning, picked up that extra two yards, put him in a third and eight. So another third down opportunity. Flames 8 of 13 converting on third down today. Three receivers to the left. Man-to-man -man coverage across the board. Free safety deep in the middle. They're bringing pressure. Linebackers coming. Willis trying to escape. Running for his life. Able to turn the corner looking for a block. Cuts it up. Stays on his feet. Are you kidding? Behind the play, we have an injured Panther. Sometimes, Matt, every once in a while, you just got to go back to the old schoolyard, figure out a way to make a play on sheer athleticism, and that's exactly what Malik Willis. Oh, my. What a run for Willis. It's Noah Curtis that's down right now and being tended to by the FIU staff. Willis, 67-yard run down inside the 15-yard line. All right, want to remind you of Sunshine State rivalries. Tonight's Saturday night football matchup. De'Eric King, the number 12 Hurricanes, hosting Florida State at Hard Rock Stadium. Canes have won the last three after the Knowles. Won seven straight, dating back to 2010. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific.
and now they're knocking on the door. Stone Norton did not play at all in the first half. The red shirt freshman out of Nashville has been the only quarterback we've seen here in the second half as he completes that one. Breaking tackles and finally knocked out of bounds. The receiver on the play was Nate Jefferson. That one looked like he almost yeah. short hopped him, but able to get his hands yeah. underneath it. Real nice job by Nate Jefferson. Like you say, get his hands underneath, make the catch, but also elude a couple tacklers. Looks like he was going to go for no gain there and end up picking up five yards. Lock kicking under five minutes to go in this ball game. Norton now seven of ten throwing the football. He's got his running back wide open, and he connects. Well, you saw it the entire way. Devontae Price sneaking out of the backfield. He was all by his lonesome. And Norton eventually found him. So now you go for two. Your FIU, the all-important two-point conversion to try to knot this thing up. Yep. A blown coverage right there. Liberty was in man-to-man -man across the board. Outside linebacker responsible for the back coming out of the backfield. Let him loose and easy pitch and catch. So where do you go with it here? Yeah, it looks like you're either going to get a man-to-man -man down here at the back shoulder fade or a rollout. Takes the handoff. Now a little pressure from Trayshawn Clark. Standing, firing to the back of the end zone, and it's caught. The two-point conversion to J.J. Holloman, but a flag on the play. Hold on. There's yellow on the field. Holding. Offense number 87. Huge. Ten-yard penalty. Replay the try. Oh. That is a backbreaker. Camarion Williams, the tight end, flag for holding. Well, one thing is clear. FIU has found their quarterback. You would sure think so after the way Stone Norton has played today. Just take Here's a look. another look. 87 right there on Trayshawn Clark. Kind of... Yeah, there was a little tug, but boy, that's tough. That's a tough call in that situation. Yeah, it's tough, the, 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 which I get while well, sympathize with the ref there. It's at the point of attack. And if it's away from the play, yeah, I don't call that. But at the point of attack. So now your two-point conversion. Nothing from about the 14-yard line. Have to buy some time. Rolling Looking out. In the back of the end zone. Looking, still looking. Finally plants his feet. Fires towards the end zone. Oh, it's caught! Dropped. He put it right on the mark to Rivaldo Fairweather, and he couldn't hang on. Stone Norton has played like a man today. Yes, he has, and he did a really nice job because the, the back line of the end zone was not available, but he bought himself some more time and threw it short to the receiver so he could come in front of the defenders and just... Drop the ball. Heartbreaking for FIU as that would have tied it up. Instead, they find themselves down two. Old Trapper Beefs. Extreme drinks. Woo! See you at the top, Tuckers. See you at the top, suckers. Huh? Uh, I made it. Old Trapper, what's your beef? Outside your window, the wild is still wild and warm and full of wonder. Outside your window, the wild is waiting. Don't forget to bring a snack. Nature Valley, we are better outside. Good morning. More treatment. We're going to try something different today. Oh, it's so pretty. Dogs bring out the good in us. Pedigree brings out the good in them. Chris Fowler here, Gosecki's new 4x4 commentator. Watch the patience of Bubble 99. He waits for a hole between the refreshing bubbles, turns on the gas, and takes it all the way to the phone zone. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. Gosecki's, a most interesting beer. 
Michael's lowest prices of the season sale. Get 70% off select frames, 60% off maker faves, plus earn 10% in Michael's rewards. Save big on fall and Halloween decor and more. Now through September 26th. Shop low prices with same-day delivery and curbside pickup. Michael's. The best way to experience something in life is for yourself. And Firestone tires were built for getting out there. Try them yourself for 90 days. If you're not fully satisfied, we'll refund or replace. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing what? Using my Old Spice Moisturize with Shea Butter Body Wash? <sighs> all I wanted was to use your body wash. And all I wanted was to have a body wash. Tired of one-topping pizza deals? Try the new $10 Tastemaker from Pizza Hut. Get any three toppings you want for just one easy payment of $10. Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. This football season, no matter where you are or how you pregame, we are all Tailgate Nation. Team up with General Mills and gear up at wearetailgatenation.com. Let's look at FIU's upcoming schedule. They actually get next week off before their home opener against Middle Tennessee. And the rest of the games on that schedule are as exciting as today's have been. They're in for a uh, yeah. real great season. This is a fun team to watch. Butch Davis and company. Meanwhile, for Liberty, we're getting news that Malik Willis has been in that medical tent really this, this entire time. And Chris Ferguson, the backup, has his helmet on and looks like he's going to enter this ball game. So we could get our first look at the main transfer at quarterback. But first, you got the Flames preparing for an onside kick here. Yeah, I'm a little surprised. I would not be kicking the ball onside right now. Four minutes and 30 to go. They don't. They kick yeah. it deep. And that will sail over the head of Shedro Lewis. I mean, that would have been. Flames will get it at the 25. And here comes Chris Ferguson. So Chris Ferguson making his Liberty debut. He was a quarterback at Maine for three years. Passed for over 5,000 yards, 34 touchdowns. Actually led Maine to the FCS semifinals back in 2018. But a completely different style totally. than what you get with Malik Willis. Yeah, I was fortunate uh, last year when Liberty played Maine. Got to see a lot of film on Chris Ferguson. And uh, let's go back to that injury real quick, Joe. The arm right there, it's the left arm is what they're looking at. Kind of got bent underneath. And he's still working with the training staff. That didn't look good. So, yeah, Chris Ferguson can really spin the ball. I was able to break him down on film last year when he played at Maine. And uh, this kid is a pocket passer, but he can throw the football, throw it really well. Accurate, strong arm, big, tough in the pocket. A couple of former Maine Black Bears in that backfield now, and Josh Mack and Ferguson drops it and just have to fall on top of it. So near disaster for Ferguson on his first snap as a flame. So that'll kind of wake you up a little bit. Ooh, get those first snap jitters out of the way and try to settle in here. We have a timeout on the field. FIU using their second timeout, trying to preserve that clock. A little early, a little early for that. I think it's way early to use that timeout. You have them in a second and long, and you got to keep four minutes and 25 seconds. The offense has momentum. Let's take a look now at Liberty's upcoming schedule, what it looks like. This is the first of three straight home games for the Flames after FIU. North Alabama comes to town, followed by Louisiana Monroe. So you start saying, I mean, Liberty getting that upset win last week, if they're able to hold on here, they could have a pretty special start. It's, it's very realistic. They're, they could be 4-0 oh, yeah. heading to Syracuse. That Louisiana Monroe team is a good team, and then you start looking at uh, Syracuse, Virginia Tech, NC State, yeah. three ACC teams. Coastal team. Carolina is Coastal Carolina is good. I mean, they put it on Kansas. Yeah. Well, but that night, a lot, yeah. not the only one to have done that here in recent years. Point, point well taken. Hand off, Josh Mack. Gets back close to the original line of scrimmage. So it's going to be third and long. And now you're going to see, as you take a look at what the Flames have done in close ball games under Hugh Freeze. So how much... 
confidence does Hugh Freeze put in his backup quarterback right now, Chris Ferguson? Yeah, not a great position to be in third and long. Thinking screens and draws right now. Ferguson looking to throw. Stands in, fires downfield, and connects with Shaw. A veteran comes in, stands tall in the pocket, and delivers in crunch time. Forgive the screens and draws. Let's throw the deep dig route on third and long with the quarterback fresh off the bench. Great throw. And Kevin Shaw making plays. A huge first down, mainly for the Flames, just to keep this yes. clock moving. Now you wish... FIU's wishing they had that timeout back. They may well. We'll see how it how it transpires here over the last three and a half minutes or so. As the Flames slowing it down, milking every second they possibly can off the clock. Ferguson, he's been around the block, played in a lot of big games, albeit at the FCS level. Time hands off to his former and now current teammate, Josh Mack. And FIU, I think, is going to, they are going to burn their final timeout. Is that the last one? Last one. Remember, they used the one early in the half when Liberty was moving quickly and they, the defense wasn't quite aligned and they took a timeout then. So now they are out of timeouts here for the final 3.09. Yeah, there's a lot of time left in the game. One, they're literally one first down away from, from not being able to have the opportunity to get the ball back. I think they took these timeouts a little bit early. Find out. But what a job by Chris Ferguson. It's tough being like being a backup quarterback is kind of like being a pinch hitter in baseball, right? You're, you never know when you're going to get called on. You're, you're not loose. You know, you're not in the game. You haven't broken a sweat. And same, same thing goes for Stone Norton on his side. Yeah. He didn't play the whole first half, gets thrown out there, and he's delivered. Now you're seeing the same thing from Ferguson on this side. Second and nine. Hand off once again. Mack able to pick up a couple. Now keep the clock moving. We check in again with Emily Austin. Guys, despite those first few snaps, Chris Ferguson is definitely prepared for this moment at practice. You see him practicing his reps about 10 yards or so behind Malik when he's doing his reps just to go through the motions. He's also established a great leadership role on this team almost immediately. Just really the total package of what you want for your quarterback. Yeah, you hear guys rave about the leadership he shows. And that can be hard to do when you're not the starter. Yeah, you know, no it's easy to lead when you're the guy. Sometimes it's harder to do when you're in a backup role. Well, he's in back-to-back, -back, third and 11. Now he's in a third and nine. Two receivers to each side. They're bringing pressure. He stands in, throws towards Shaw again, knocked down. No flags on the field. And FIU... Gets the job done. Yeah, they got their stop. I really like what FIU did defensively there. They took a gamble. They said, hey, we're the young quarterback coming in, fresh off the branch. They blitzed him up the middle with the six-man pressure, played man across the board, and made him hurry that throw a little bit. Big punt coming for Aiden Alvis as he tries to pin the Panthers deep. What a game. Now this one punt today, he did get it to check up right at the 20-yard line, and we may have had some movement on that Liberty line. Ball start. Offense, number seven. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Those are, those are such big penalties. That five yards could be the, the difference in an attempted field goal here late in the game, but protect protect the punter here and make sure you cover well. It's interesting to see what FIU wants to do. Are they going to try to punt return? Are they going to go after this? Imagine going to try to return it. Alvis gets it away. Low kick. He's going to bounce around the 22 and grab it at the 25. So wasn't able to really pin him deep with that. Could be a lot worse for the Panthers here as they get set to start really what what is the ball game on this drive with 211 yep. to go uh, and two point game 211 to go we set ourselves up for a good one here you start to wonder too the range of the freshman kicker chase gabriel that becomes a factor hasn't kicked a field goal today which means he hasn't kicked one in his collegiate career the first this ball game up to the redshirt freshman, Stone Norton, at quarterback. He's been up for the challenge so far today. Plus formation, two and two. 
Here comes pressure, stands in there, delivers a strike to his tight end. Really like that call. Just a quick little check down route, the inside receiver, pick up five yards on first down. Sterling Palmer on the reception. Back to same formation. Time in the pocket. Now just threw it away. He's trying to point out there's a receiver in the area. There was no receiver in the area. I think they may get him for intentional grounding the Officials here. are going to talk about it. You freeze pleading his case. And will the flag come out? Yes. It's always the most nonchalant yeah, of flag the, tosses yeah. on the uh, intentional grounding. But that's a huge play. Big play. Intentional grounding, number three on the offense. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. We're also down. Huge. And we talked about the poise that Stone Norton had shown all day long. That's the first time we've seen him kind of yeah. rush himself into a bad decision. He had time to stand in a little bit longer. Well, he had the go route on the outside. He really just thrown it long down the sidelines. Throw it deep. Just kind down of the panicked sidelines. there for a moment, and it's going to cost him quite a bit as that backs him up. Big third down coming now, about 12 yards. Fires, miscommunication. He was looking for Holloman. Holloman stopped on the route, and the ball sailed about 20 yards over the top of his head. Yeah, what that is right there, Matt, is that's a choice route by Holloman on the outside. What he's doing is saying, if the DB is deeper than I am, I'm going to break that off and turn it into a comeback. If I'm even, I'm leaving, is what they like to say. But on that play, he broke it off, and Norton threw the deep ball, thinking that he was running to go. Fourth down. Here's your ball game. Fourth and 12. Lane showing just the four down linemen. And they drop everybody back. Darrell Johnson, Trayshawn Clark pin their ears back. Here comes Johnson. Jayon Sanders in there as it wrapped up. Drops. And the Flames defense gets the job done. So much will be made of the offensive performance today by Liberty, but when they needed it, and the game was on the line, the Liberty defense came to play. I'll tell you what, they pinned their ears back like a couple of Doberman pitches right there and got after the quarterback. Wow! Big time play on fourth down to win the game. Jayon Sanders, he has had an interesting career with the Flames. He's kind of just... A home run hitter. It's a sack, or that part is not in the stat sheet. It's kind of been his career, it seems. But he got there that time and essentially locks up the victory for Liberty. The big question now for the Flames, certainly going forward, is the health of Malik Willis. Yes. But for now, they're thrilled to celebrate moving to 2-0 and on the season. Chris Ferguson takes the knee. This clock ticks down towards zero. The Flames start this season with back-to-back -back wins against quality opponents. Hugh Frieza said this yes. is the best schedule we have Liberty has ever had. As you get a look at Malik Willis, that doesn't look great. The sling, the ice. I'm sure Hugh Freeze will update the media however much he can after the ball game, but. Boy, you just hope that kid is all right because he is special. Yeah, he's electrifying. What a game. Matt, what a game. I'm sweating up here. <laughs> Brow sweat. Victory formation for Liberty. Ferguson takes the knee once again. As this clock right on, that's it. Down, and that should do it. A couple of great head coaches, Hugh Freeze, Butch Davis. You expect nothing less than what we got today. Most of the day, a one-possession ball game. You learned a lot about FIU moving forward and what you think you have at quarterback with Stone yeah. Norton. Yeah. Some really yeah. positive things for them. You clean up some of those penalties, yep. and this is a dangerous, dangerous team moving forward. Really good football team. And for Liberty, you hope number seven isn't hurt as bad as it kind of appears. Great coaches, a lot of respect for each other, know each other well. Their teams put it all out there today as Liberty ends up winning 36-34. What a great start. That was a lot of fun, Matt. Thanks for moving to 2-0. Next week we'll host North Alabama right here at Williams Stadium. That kick also.
at 1 o'clock as the Flames 527 total yards of offense in this ballgame. But the defense able to seal the deal in the end as they defeat FIU 36-34 in their home opener this season. So for Joe Yock, Emily Austin, I'm Matt Warner. Thank you so much for tuning in today. As the Flames once again get the victory 36-34. Old Trapper Beefs, tough snacks. Out here, nothing comes easy. That's why you gotta be tough. My truck, it's tough. My crew, definitely tough. But Old Trapper, top of the value, tenderness. Old Trapper, what's your beef? Oh, it's a puppy. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren, you've got a 160 IQ, a master's in chemical engineering, I and mean, you're technically a genius. And it appears you're quite the investor. I like to trade. Well, TD Ameritrade has pros ready if you need help, say, talking through a new strategy, just in case things you know, get a little rocky. I'm sorry. On the upside, I think that's waterproof. Maybe not. Here, every game feels like home. Because with Caesars Rewards, NFL fans are treated like family. Are able to flock with their own kind. All while soaking in the fun. With over 50 destinations worldwide, Caesars Rewards welcomes you to your home away from home. Caesars Rewards, welcome away. Can't wait to Tell everyone about AT&T's big 5G news. AT&T has nationwide 5G? Yep. And that's faster? Faster, yeah. But is it reliable? Uh-huh, and secure. You should consider making a big deal about it. Bigger? I said bigger. Oh, big, bigger deal, bigger than what I'm doing? It's not complicated. A 5G network needs a 5G device. Now everyone, including existing customers, can get a free Samsung Galaxy Note 20 after trade-in. When I wake up in the morning, love, and the sunlight hurts my eyes, then Good I look at Good you. Good morning. And I know it's gonna be a lovely day. And this is the feeling of total protection. Now that we protect your identity, mobile phone, auto, home, and life, you've never been in better hands. Allstate. Click or call for a quote today. When our daughter and her kids moved in with us... Kids, bedtime. She was worried we wouldn't be able to keep up. Of course we can. What couldn't keep up was our bargain detergent. Turns out it's mostly water, and that doesn't work as well on stains. So we switch back to Tide. One wash, stains are gone. Kind of like our quiet time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't pay for water. Tide is concentrated with three times the active cleaning ingredients. If it's got to be clean, it's got to be Tide. Ready or not, here I come. Gillette ProGlide and ProGlide Gel. Five blades and a pivoting flex ball designed to get virtually every hair on the first stroke while washing away dirt and oil. So you're ready for the day with a clean shave and a clean face. Ready or not, here I come. You can't hide. Selling a home is hard, stressful, and can cost thousands, even in the best of times. But today, the best real estate agent matters more than ever. A home light, move safe certified agent sells homes faster for more money and is committed to keeping you and your family safe. From providing things like virtual showings to digital closings and following the most current health guidelines, is your real estate agent move safe certified? Find out today at homelight.com. I'll say it, the hype is real, everyone. Bird dog. Bird dog shorts. Bird dog shorts. Bird dogs just figured it out. Gym shorts. But they have the underwear built in. Pretty confident these shorts are from the future. Absurdly comfortable. The most comfortable thing I own, bar none. I wear these guys, I'm set. I can swim in them.